Good evening. Welcome to the uh, January 14th, 2021 meeting of the St. Mary's County Board of Appeals located in the commissioner's room, St. Mary's County meeting room of the Chesapeake building. Address is 41770 Boulder Street, Leonardtown, Maryland. Um, let's see. We have, uh, I'm acting chairman just for a few minutes here until we have our vote for the new, new year. And we have three other members here and then one via WebEx. Um, due to the Board of Appeals meeting not being open to the public currently, applicants and or their representatives are participating through teleconference or WebEx. This meeting can be viewed on channel 95 or the county's YouTube channel. Also, the public may listen to the meeting on their phones, but not, <coughs> but not speak to the board. You may speak to the board by calling 1-301-579-7236 and then use access code 763-443, followed by the pound sign. If any members of the public would like to participate by talking to the board during public testimony, please call the following number, 301-475-4200, extension 1234. When you call this number, Ms. Sherry Young, recording secretary, will ask your name, address, phone, and email. In other words, this is a virtual sign-in sheet. Ms. Young will place you on the line on hold after I announce that I am opening the hearing up to the public testimony. I will open the meeting to public testimony after the presentations and testimonies by the applicants and representatives have been completed. When you're taken off hold, you will be asked to state your name, address for the record. I will swear you in. You will have three minutes to ask your questions or make your comments directly to the board. Your comments will be recorded and heard by those of us in the Chesapeake building, Web WebEx participants, Channel 95, and on YouTube. After the public comments portion of the meeting is over, the case will return to the board for discussion and its decision. Uh, okay. I'd like to, the members to introduce themselves, starting from my left. Good evening, Rich Richardson. Dan Ekniowski. Lynn Delahay. Wayne Madensky. <coughs> and John Brown. Uh, good evening, Steve Scott, board attorney. Harry Knight, Department of Land Use Growth Management. Stacy Clements, Department of Land Use and Growth Management. Okay, what do we got then? Mm -hmm. Let me go down to Amy. You want to do that or you want me to do that? I can do that for you. Okay. The adjoint, and in the adjoining media room is Amy Carter, and Sherry Young is in the Savage Conscience Room um, manning the phones. Um, in attendance um, via teleconference is Neil Murphy, our county attorney, Bill Hunt, the director of land use and growth management, and okay and then we have our appellants and applicants for um our cases tonight which will be introduced during their cases okay you go ahead and nominate okay um this is a new year so our first order of business is to elect our new chairman because mr hayden is uh Served his term, so we have to elect a new chairman and go from there. Uh, nominations for chairman. I like to second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Brown? No? Okay. No, I, 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 I You did, but you yeah, still. But it, now it's the vote, Mr. Brown. Okay. <laughs> I got a vote or it doesn't matter, I guess. 
No, you're, yes. you're, you're good. You're, you're in for better or for worse. Yeah, hearing, Mr. hearing none opposed and a majority uh, <laughs> unanimous vote, Mr. Ignowski is now the chairman. Thank you. And we have one more to do, and that would be a vice chairman. And uh, I will take a nomination for the vice chairman. I'd like to nominate Mr. John Brown as vice chairman. I'll second. Uh, and call for the vote. Yes. 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 John? Congratulations. <laughs> nice. Thank, you. Thank you all for your, for your <laughs> nomination. Um, and uh, since it's relatively new for me, I would ask that we have, uh, keep, keep your minds open, keep me straight, and keep me moving in the right direction. I would really appreciate that. Tonight we have two public hearing cases on the agenda this evening. Case number one is VAAP 19-132. Dash 00001 for the Callaway 711. And the second case will be ZAAP 201746, Town Creek Marina, Burkhardt Appeal. Before we start the hearing for the viewers at home, you will be able to see the staff and the applicant presentations on Channel 95 or YouTube as these presentations are being shown. You can also see the documents that have been submitted in this case by going to board docs. Ms. Clements will now demonstrate how to go to board docs. Okay. First, we need to go to St. Mary's, or S-T-M-A-R-Y-S-M-D.com. Uh, yes. But I mean, can you see it on the website screen? Um, no. It's on. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, then we go to the board docs in the upper right hand side. And it takes a little bit of time to load, it's a large program running. And once it gets loaded, we will look for the tonight's meeting, the January 14th meeting, Board of Appeals, which is right there. <coughs> and then on the left-hand side, you'll see it at the top, starred. And down in the center, you'll see view the agenda for tonight's meeting. And then on the left-hand side, you will see everything that's on the agenda. Um, number five and six are our public hearings. You can open the public hearing and view all the exhibits and the attachments. Was there any questions? No? Okay. Before we get to the first case, I'd like to swear in uh, Ms. Clements and Mr. Knight. So if you both stand. Um, Raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you were about to give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, we will now hear the first case, which will be the 711. And Mr. Longmore, I expect you will be leading the charge. Oh, Mr. Chairman, we would normally. Ah, okay. Um, very good, we'll do that. And now I guess we're ready for a staff presentation. Yeah, 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 we would normally do the staff presentation. Right, okay, I'm sorry, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, let me pull up the PowerPoint. Let's see, share screen, Microsoft PowerPoint. And... Okay. There we go. Let's get here. Okay. Tonight we're here for the public hearing of January 14th, 2021. We're here to hear case BAAP 19 132 001, Callaway 711. They're asking for a variance to reduce the required 60 five foot type B buffer yard along Maryland's Route 5 and 249, and to reduce the required 30 foot type C buffer yard along the east side of the property. 
Okay, the legal ads um, were printed in the local um, Southern Maryland news on December 25th and January 1st, and the property was posted for notification to the neighbor and notifications to the neighbors were mailed um, on December 29th. Okay, the owners are George and Lori Ann Bowles. Mr. Longmore will be their acting agent tonight. The location of the property is at 20915 Point Lookout Road and 20744 Piney Point Road, both in Callaway. The land use is mixed use, low intensity. Its zoning is village mixed use and its acreage is 1.11 acres combined. The um, currently on the property is an existing single family dwelling. They're proposing to remove the existing um, house and redevelop the property with a 3,500 square foot convenience store with a 33,183 square foot canopy for the petroleum fuel dispensers. Um, the Planning Commission approved the concept site plan on August 17th, 2020 on the condition, the, the variance approval for the buffer yard or the reduction of the buffer yards. Okay. The property is located at the intersection of um, uh, Maryland Route 5 and Maryland Route 249 or excuse, yeah, 249. Um, it's zoning is VMX. Land use, once again, is mixed use, low intensity, and the adjoining surrounders is also that. Okay, we are, um, the existing conditions. This has um, an existing house on the back portion and open grass area in the front. We've got the gas station here um, and a gas station over here with a fast food. And then we've got the retail behind that. Okay, uh, the site plan. There's the existing conditions sheet. The um, site plan development. There is their landscaping plan their landscaping details, uh, the buffer yard standards, um, the C buffer yard, or the B buffer yard requires 65 feet. Um, let's see, there we go. C. And here we have, this is the proposed landscaping plan with the required 65 and 30 foot buffer yards is shown in the green ride with the red dimension notation, notations and the red property lines. So what we have here is the red property lines, okay? Right here in the green would show what the buffer yards, if it was built according to standards, would look like. Okay. And this is the proposed landscaping plan with the reduced buffer yards as shown with the green buffer line and then the red property line set off. Okay, the standards for granting and variance except as provided in sections 24.3 and 24.4 and 24.5, the Board of Appeals shall not uh, vary the regulations of the ordinance unless it makes these findings based upon evidence presented to it that one, because of the particular physical surroundings, such as exceptional narrowness, shallowness, size, shape, or topo topographical conditions of the property involved, strict enforcement of the ordinance will result in practical difficulty. Number two, the conditions created Creating the difficulty are not applicable generally to other properties within the same zoning classification. Three, the purpose of the variance is not based exclusively upon reasons of convenience, profit, or caprice. 
it is understood that any development necessary increases the property value and that alone shall not constitute an exclusive finding. Number four, the alleged difficulty has not been created by the property owner or the owner's predecessors in title. Number five, the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood and the character of the district will not be changed by the variance. Number six, the proposed variance will not substantially increase the congestion of the public streets or increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety or substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. And lastly, number seven, the variance complies with as nearly as possible with the spirit, intent, and purpose of the comprehensive plan. And <clears throat> board members, yes. I'd, I'd like to add that um, yep. the PowerPoint presentation followed the legal ad. <clears throat> However, as the staff report pointed out, there was a um, there was an error in the legal ad um, stating that they needed a variance for the 30 foot um, side buffer yard. And that was not correct. <clears throat> it was a misinterpretation of the um, concept site plan staff report where it described that the 30 foot is allowed to be reduced to 15 on the condition that the property adjacent is vacant and it is vacant. And um, so I just want to let you know, I want to point out that while the mm -hmm. power PowerPoint talked about a 30 foot buffer yard being reduced because we advertised that, and of course the 65 foot um, along the highways being reduced, the only variance that's actually re required tonight and that you should only be considering is the reduction of the 65 foot. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I had trouble understanding just what the variance was, so I called Mr. Knight this morning and found out what it was reduced from the 65 and the 30, what it was reduced to. It's really not clear at all what it's reduced to. Could you explain Certainly. what it is reduced to? Yes, and so I do apologize if the staff report was not explicit enough. Um, so, the but it's an excellent question, and it does need to be <coughs> clarified to fully understand the scope of the variance request. So. We've got a required 65-foot buffer, buffer yard along Maryland Route 5 and Maryland Route 249. The, um, could you go back to that slide? Mm -hmm. the, the one that shows the required buffer yards? Yep. <clears throat> so okay. you'll see, see that the green line um, comes quite far, it, it almost touches the side of the convenience store and it actually cuts through the gas canopy. So um, the proposed store and the proposed gas canopy and the associated parking cannot accommodate a 65 foot buffer yard. So the dimension they're going down to, what Mr. Richardson wanted me to clarify, they're dropping from 65 feet down to 19 feet generally and the reason i say generally is because they they are able to strike two very clear 19 foot lines but when the property turns the corner that 19 foot varies a little bit so oh i'm sorry i normally i think i'm loud enough <laughs> um <clears throat> so anyway the um the 65 foot it, the variance request is to reduce the 65 foot to a um, general 19 foot, thus making the buffer yard 29% of the um, minimum required buffer yard. Thank you. Uh, Harry, along the south part of the property line, is the buffer there adequate and, and meets requirements? Yes, it does. Um, it, it would require a 30 foot buffer yard if, well, depending on the development on the property next door. So for instance, on the, um, we'll say the west side of the property where there's a house, that's why that requires a 30 foot buffer and they're providing a 30 foot buffer there. On the south side of the property, um, if the land was not vacant, they would be required to provide a larger buffer yard. But because the land is vacant, they can provide half 
of the 30 foot buffer yard. So the only variance before us tonight is the 65 foot dropping down to 19 foot along the highways. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? Um, yeah, it dropped down to 19 you, foot, but what type of buffer are we talking about? It is a B buffer, is it not? You can go to right. that slide. Not a 19 foot B buffer. Yes. Okay. And and um, this, yeah, that's the B on the top. Uh, mm -hmm. And so now can you go back to the landscaping plan? Mm -hmm. And go to the one that shows the proposed so that we're, we, yeah. So see now the green line and um, you can see the quantity of landscaping that they're planning to plant, including outside the buffer, but inside the, you know, call it the landscape on the um, right side of the screen there. Okay. Um, only other question. Is there any fence involved at all? There is. Um, yes, there's a six foot. There's a six foot fence along the south side. But I don't believe the one that was reduced to. Well, but that's not. No, not not along not the two forty nine or the five. Right. Right. So, the, so the sixty five foot bu buffer reducing to nineteen will not include a fence. Correct. Okay. I'll, but but no, we're on the property at all. Fence. They do. On the. Um, south side. Well, and then they would also require that on the other side there. I don't believe so. Because they were both required to be the same type of buffer. Let me let me open the plan and see. Okay. <clears throat> I do see what appears to be I see a 3.5, three and a half foot wood fence. Is that it? Is, do you see that there? Yeah. I'm looking. That's, yeah. That's on the uh, outside. Yeah, okay. that's existing. Proposed six foot uh, high fence also on the west side. It's in your attachments. So on the, on the um, south and west side because both of those Correct. require the same C buffer. South and west? Yes. Yes, proposed six foot high fence and proposed six foot high fence. I put my eyes on it, it's mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <clears throat> right. Thank you. What type of fence is it? It would be the type that's described in the buffer yard standard. Do you want to go to that slide? So do we name it there? Uh, da, 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 no fences, a I just six no. foot tall fence or a six foot tall masonry wall. So, so now you'd have to go oh, to, and huh? Stacy can do that, um, to the detail page where they would mm -hmm. potentially show us the fence. Let's see. It's not jumping off the page at me there. No. I got the buffer. I guess where I'm coming from is it stockade or chain link or what? That might be a question for the applicant. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because it does not appear to be it does okay. not appear to be illustrated on the plan. No. All right. Thank you. It's okay. labeled on the plan, um, meeting the minimum height. Okay. Any other I, questions, John? Uh, Ms. Dilla, I have a couple questions, but Ms. Dilla may have one first. I think we're finished here. You can go ahead, John. Okay, and it's kind of like for the record, the prop, the third property, I guess, headed down Piney Point Road. What, and, and also the property behind this, that field, uh, what is, you don't show it on your slide, but what is the zoning of those two properties? Uh, she actually does, if you go back to the, your zoning slide. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I missed it, but anyway, it, it's, in other words, the adjacent, I understand the ones involved, but I'm thinking about the adjacent property to this. There we go. They're, they're all VMX. Okay, good. And I forgot my next question, so roll on. <laughs> okay. Thank you all.
Mr. Longmore. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, how about uh, I administer the oath and then I'll call off the names of those that I have listed will be participating on your side and have them agree. And if I miss any, you can fill me in on the end. Is that okay? That sounds great, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yes. If they would raise their right hand to themselves. <laughs> Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury and the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And first on the list I have is Brianna Wilson. I do. Chantella Marino. I do. Nicholas Speech. I do. Mike Lenhart. And he's not around yet, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's Nick uh, Dryben for Lenhart traffic tonight. Okay. Nick Dribben. I do. Chris Williams. Cur I do. Curtis yes. Williams. And Mr. Longmore, it's yours, unless I forgot somebody. Nope. Thank you. I think that uh, I think that covers our, our team and um, members of the board. We appreciate being here tonight. Um, it's a pleasure to be in front of you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations uh, on your selection this evening. Um, as the staff uh, shared, we're here seeking a variance um, from the buffer yard standards. And as Mr. Knight um, clarified, and I think spelled out very well, the two um, that we need tonight are along the highways um, that are there. Um, our main presentation tonight will be by Nicholas Speech, the, the primary engineer who's worked on the project, uh, who helped to assist in creating the concept site plan. As the staff report uh, mentioned, the concept site plan was presented to the Planning Commission. I believe that I believe after two nights of hearings, it, it may have been three, uh, was approved on August 17th of 2020. One of the conditions that um, they placed on it was that we come to this board to seek variances. Um, they did review the site plan as presented to you and approved it subject to your variances tonight. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Speech, and I know he has a PowerPoint to both get you generally familiar with the site plan um, and then walk through the requested variances tonight. Sure, thank you. Um, I'm gonna do my best to share my screen here and I will walk you through Our quick presentation, uh, as always, staff did a wonderful job, so I'm not going to belabor this and, and walk you through a ton of the same information, but I'll try to clarify a few pieces um, just so you guys can have a better idea of, of what we're proposing and why. Um, so as noted uh, in staff's presentation, we are located at the corner of Point Lookout and Piney Point Road. Um, there is a single family house and driveway located on the southern portion of our site. Uh, the northern portion of the site is currently vacant. Uh, just to show again, to give a little bit more clarity without the lot line shown, uh, you can see from this aerial uh, to the right of us or to the east is an open field. To the south of us is another single family house. And again, west we're bordered by Piney Point, north we're bordered by Point Lookout Road. Uh, as a part of the original site plan approval, uh, one of the, the factors that we had discussed, which is a little different from what staff had shown, uh, just because they have the original plans that were submitted, we did update our entrance to Point Lookout to be a right in, right out, as you can see on the slide in front of you. Um, this was worked out with the state, and so from this, we have a, a little bit different of a, a buffer up on front. The sizes don't change, though. Um, one thing that I want to point out on this slide, and just to, to make sure everyone understands, one of the key factors of the reason that we're asking for this variance on the buffer widths along both roadways is because of the narrow shape of the site. And as you get to the intersection, the site kind of cuts off drastically. And so um, as staff mentioned in their presentation, while we are not proposing a consistently uh, one size buffer, uh, we, we can't in this case because the frontage along point lookout is not 
perpendicular necessarily. So uh, that that width on that side does vary while uh, along Pine Point, we do have a, a consistent 15 foot buffer. Um, the buffer along Point Lookout varies from, in one case, you can see just as the, the area next to the parking spaces, we can actually hit the 65 feet, uh, but for a, a large portion of it, we're, we're closer <laughs> to uh, a mix between 65 down to the 19 feet as staff described. Um, just from the site plan requirements is what was approved previously. Uh, we do meet the other requirements for building setbacks, canopy setbacks. Um, so that's not an issue. It really comes down to this next slide. And, and this is our landscape plan that's being proposed. Again, this landscape plan shows the updated entrance of the right in, right out. Um, and one of the key things to note, as I mentioned previously, you know, we have a consistent 15 foot buffer along the western side of our property. Uh, we have a, a varying buffer of 19 feet to the full 65 feet along Point Lookout. Uh, and the main reason we're asking for this is because as the site is being used uh, and to make this use work, obviously we need to be able to have vehicles traverse the site, coming in both entrances, be able to get to the convenience store, use the pumps, uh, and furthermore, we need trucks to be able to access the site to fill the tanks, um, to bring deliveries to the store. So in order to have those larger vehicles be able to make their turns and, and work through the site, we needed more room. Uh, and, and honestly, the, just the 65 foot buffer uh, wouldn't, wouldn't give us any drive aisles. Um, I believe staff mentioned in their presentation, and, and I'm not sure if everyone can see it, but this dashed line that kind of comes through the, the center of the site, that's where the buffers would be if we use the 65 feet along both roadways. And you can see, you know, you can barely get a convenience store alone uh, without even having drive aisles. So there really would be no access to the, the proposed use if we weren't granted a variance for this buffer reduction. Uh, one of the key things that I think needs to be mentioned though is while we are asking for a reduction in the width of the buffer, we're not asking and we're not proposing reduction in the landscape that is actually going to be planted. So the requirement for specimen trees and shrubs are all being met. So we, what we're doing in a sense is we're creating a more dense buffer. While it may not be as wide, it's still providing the, the, the shade and the, uh, the visual buffer that, that that would normally be giving. Um, again, it just would be in a more compact setting. So we feel as a part of this, we are moving the intent of the code while just reducing the size to make the use work. Uh, so with that, uh, that, that wraps up my presentation. Again, um, just to kind of show, we are reducing the, the buffers along Point Lookout from 65 to at a, the minimum 19, although that varies. And along Piney Point, uh, we are reducing from 65 feet to 15 feet. Now, I, I know staff did bring up a couple other items, uh, which I will address quickly just to, to give you a little bit more information. Um, the south of the site along the existing house that will remain, we do have a 30 foot buffer. We are providing that 30 foot buffer. Uh, we are also meeting the plant requirement in that buffer. Uh, along the Eastern side to the vacant lot, uh, we have a 15 foot buffer requirement. We are providing that 15 feet and providing the landscaping required. Uh, and then I know there was a question that came up regarding the fencing. Uh, while fencing is not required because we are meeting the buffer widths, uh, we are pro pro excuse me, we are proposing fences um, just as an additional screening method. The fence that are, is being proposed, while not detailed on the plan, is meant to be a board on board fence. So it is a a screening measure from a visual standpoint. Um, it's not chain link or stockade. Uh, it, it will be a, a full visual screen. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll wrap up my presentation and I will offer up any answers to questions you may have. I have one question. Um, I'm, I've seen where the uh, planning commission, they wanted sidewalks. I'm, are they shown on the plan? 
So the original plan that was submitted did not have the sidewalks that were uh, asked for by the Planning Commission. We are proposing those and we will include them in our final plans. One thing with the sidewalks, just to clarify, they will be within the right of way, so they won't be on our site. And so the buffers that are provided are on our site. So the sidewalks that will go in will not reduce or affect the width or planting requirement in these buffers. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Mutinsky? No. Len? No. Uh, no, I, John, typical, questions? Typical me, here I come. Uh, the one question I have is, if the, and I, I've seen your diagrams of where it is, but I look at it as you have acquired a piece of land and then you've overbuilt it. I mean, that's somebody could allege that, okay? And therefore you need the buffers. What would be the impact if you, or would you even build if you, if you're building, if, the, if you had the standard buffer, if you had the 65 foot buffer, how would that truly impact the pumps and the convenience store? I Meaning so it would obviously have to be reduced, I assume. Right. So, that, you know, to that point, we wouldn't be able to fit, quite frankly, the canopy or the convenience store on the site um, with having drive aisles and parking that's required for what we're doing. So because of the, the tight nature of the site and the shape that it is, and in, in addition, the, the way that the right of way cuts off at the intersection, um, the site, even without what we're proposing, but I would say with, with a lot of proposals of what you would be able to do on the site, it would be too small to fit everything. Okay, I just wanted to get that point in, that's all. Understood. And, and just one more clarification, the uh, board on board fence, it's six foot high? That's correct. And and what what side is, there, is that on? On the south side and it would be on the south and the east. So it would be oh, buffering both sides of the site that weren't fronted by a runway. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Medinsky, what? when I was describing the cardinal points, I was considering driving south on five. So that's why we're twisted ninety degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> John, I have one. More. One more question, if I may, Mr. Chair. Sure. Uh, the board on the board, I, I, I have a visual concept of what that is. In simple terms, any tra what it really will do also is trap any trash or paper or anything else that may be blowing through the property. In other words, it's not gonna be something like a, a, you know, where it's open and trash could blow through it, correct? That's correct. Okay, I just wanna understand that. Any other questions? No, sir. Um, Mr. Longmore. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, Nick is our primary presenter, um, given the, the relief we're requesting tonight. We do have um, uh, other members of our team here. If there are any other additional questions, we ask that uh, Nick Driven from Lenhart and uh, Traffic be here as well in case there's any questions about that. Uh, Mr. Speech did show you the right in, right out entrance as it's currently configured, which was the third uh, condition on the concept site plan approval. And, and Mr. Uh, Drevin could certainly speak to that. Chantel Marino is here with EBI Consulting, who is a senior project coordinator with that uh, consultant, and she's been working on the project. And, and um, as you heard during the swearing in, Ms. Wilson and Mr. Williams, um, are here as representatives from 7-Eleven if there's any questions. Um, but we do believe that, you know, Mr. Speech kind of showed you the need for it. And once we're done with any questions you have, I would appreciate the opportunity to, to summarize and kind of highlight what's in the record that we think is important uh, to our requested relief. Any other questions from the board members? No, sir. John, questions, any more questions? No, no. Okay, it's up to you, Mr. Longmore. Did, uh, and, and Mr. Chairman, I believe this is a, a, a public hearing. I don't want to step on Harry or, or Stacy's toes. I don't know if 
we need to open it up oh, for that and then yes. yeah. typically i'll provide well, my closing yeah i misunderstood that. mr but apparently he wants to withhold his um final remarks for after the public hearing okay that's um, fine well hearing from the public that's correct it that way. yes and then yeah. we'll open the, the meeting to uh the public comment and i guess we'll check to see if anybody is online okay Are there any um, speakers on the phone? Um, no, but it might be good to um, announce the phone number one more time for here. Oh. Usually, um, oh, you want me to do that? I got it right here. You got it? Okay. okay. If Thank anybody you, would like to make public comments or speak to the board, the phone number is 301-475-4200. Extension 1234. Call, call now or? Call now or uh, forever, forever hold your peace. <laughs> Into a wedding or two. <laughs> Um, so Stacy can call again and um, like for instance if she's on with someone we won't get through so that'll be a good test but if we get through no one has called. Okay. Okay just let me know when you want. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay. Court of Appeal. Sherry do we have any callers? Um, we have one that has passed it but they are okay. so I do not have any on the line at this time. Okay. Thank you. And then we did get one written public comment from Mr. Hoskins. Yes, Charles Hop Hoskins. Hoskins, Hoskins from Hollywood, Lighten correct? Up. Lighten up. Yeah. And I think his, his comments were, we have enough gas stations. In that area. In, in a nutshell, that was it. But that, I think that item has been taken out, taken and approved by the Planning Commission. They, they, they've been decayed or approved by it. So I guess we're to you now, Mr. Longmore. Um, you would want to formally close public comment. The, the yes, I don't okay. see anything like that. Formally close the public flash. comment. Yeah. Bang. Bang. I tap. I'm not as loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. If I may, I can uh, summarize the relief we're requesting and 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 highlight some of the items in the record that we think support it. Um, and I'll be brief tonight, but can certainly answer any questions the board has. Uh, the the standards are set forth in the in the written staff report. I'll, I'll highlight some of the the items that have been put into the record tonight, and that are also found on board docs, uh, which of course are part of the record as well. Uh, the first standard is that because of the particular physical surroundings, such as exceptional narrowness, shallowness, size, shape or topographical conditions. Strict enforcement of the ordinance will result in practical difficulty. Uh, we believe that this site can show this, as mentioned in the staff report. Uh, the narrowness of the site is certainly the primary reason for requesting these. And also, we believe the shape of the site um, at the intersection where the two um, highways meet, um, you, you saw from the uh, site uh, plans that uh, it isn't a pure rectangle. There is a cutoff there, and it'd be very difficult to meet the um, any setbacks for really any type of, of mixed-use development or any commercial development, um, including the one that we're, we proposed and was approved by the Planning Commission. The second standard is the conditions creating the difficulty are not applicable generally to other properties in the same zoning classification. Um, this narrowness and that shape are unique to this site. Um, and, and you can see just looking to the south of the site, there's a very large parcel that does not have the same type of uh, restrictions that we have many others um, on the zoning map that were presented tonight. Um, the third standard is that the purpose of the variance is not based exclusively for convenience, profit, or caprice. Um, we're requesting this again because of the, the nature of the site and the narrowness of it. Um, this use is allowed in the uh, district that it's in, and, and the Planning Commission has seen fit to approve the, the site plan with the conditions that are before you tonight. Um, the alleged difficulty, the fourth standard is that the difficulty has not been created by the property owner or their predecessors in title. Um, as noted in the staff report, the size and shape of the parcels 
Uh, and again, there's two parcels that are, are being treated as one site. Uh, they predate the, predate the proposed development plan. The fifth standard is the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood. And the character of the district will not be changed by the variance. Um, as noted in the staff report, um, all neighbors have been provided notice as required under the ordinance and those uh, receipts are in the record. Um, I'd also note that the aerial photo that is part of the, the um, staff PowerPoint tonight, I believe it was on slide nine, does show the area and um, with the buffer yards that would be provided by my client after the variance, I believe they'd be the most intense buffer yards in that area. So we believe that if anything, this will improve um, the public welfare and, and provide appropriate buffers for the type of use we have. The sixth standard is that the proposed variance will not substantially increase the congestion of public streets or increase any danger of fire or public safety um, or diminish or uh, impair property values. Um, the TEC and Planning Commission have reviewed this. Uh, the TEC agencies all recommended approval by the Planning Commission as found in the uh, staff report or as mentioned there, and the Planning Commission saw fit to approve it where they addressed most of those standards. Um, and we don't believe the reduction in these buffer yards in any way will cause any danger to the public um, as set forth in that standard. And the last standard is that the variance complies as nearly as possible with the spirit, intent, and purpose of the comprehensive plan. This property is in the Callaway Village Center. This is one of the uh, zoning uh, categories or centers that where development is uh, targeted to be. Uh, it's a third tier level of development within our um, county, just below the development center, uh, development districts and the town centers. Uh, so there is a, a pro the proposed plan of our county does provide that this use is allowed here. Uh, the commercial development and mixed use development is encouraged to go there. Uh, with the goal that it be in these areas and not in the more rural areas of our county. So we believe that it is consistent with that. And as Mr. Brown said, you know, anytime you ask for a variance, you are asking for a variance from the standard uh, dimensions that are normally required for these. But I would note, as I know the board is well aware, that asking for a variance does not mean that you don't comply with the comprehensive plan. It's part of the planning process, and it is a clear right of an applicant to seek one under the zoning ordinance, we believe. Uh, that we have met the standards that are here. We think this is a good site. Um, Mr. Speech had shared with you the site plan. There will be sidewalks there, which will be nice for that area. Um, there will be the fencing on the back side of that to protect the neighboring properties that are there. Um, and again, this will be a buffer on our site that is not on other properties, particularly the other ones right at that intersection. So we think this will add both to the aesthetics of the area and to the safety of it. So we'd ask that you approve the variance is presented to you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Those are uh, my comments, but certainly, certainly if the board has any questions, we're happy to answer. No, oh, good. I guess we'll open it up for discussion. Yes, a, a I, I have one, I have one, I have one question, I'm Mr. Sorry. Longmore. Uh, and it's just pure clarification because we'll have to ultimately put it in our motions uh, is, while we're reducing it to, I would say, like a variable 19 foot or whatever it is around the edge, what will be the vegetation again as far as the planting? B buffer? And, and, sure, it, it'll be a B buffer with all the required plantings uh, per you know linear feet, the way the buffers are set up, I think. So it'll have the same number of plantings. It'll just be on a more narrow strip okay. than the 65 normal one. And, and again, al along the north border of the property it would be a 15 foot uh down to 15 foot reduction on the east side i believe or on the route five side that's where it'd be a variable 19 foot thank you thank you okay discussion so, mr chairman i i'll shut up now <laughs> uh, mr chairman I think we're all familiar with Callaway. Uh, I used to work on the base, so I drove there every day. I have rental property down there, close by that. Callaway is a virtual desert. There's hardly a tree down there. And I think the addition of these buffers will be a bright green spot down there. I mean, it's a nice little area, but it's 
it's desolate. Uh, there's the buildings are built right up to the road. Sidewalk be nice to have, but it's all, it's almost too late. Mm -hmm. And I, I I would go vote to approve it. I think it'll be a nice addition down there. So even with the narrowness, but they have the number of trees in there to meet the requirement and yeah. brighten up the area. Okay. I think that there's a significant request in the reduction of the buffer. So, um, is there any, is there an uh, happy medium we can come to not not to grant that large of a difference? Uh, that would be my question. Um, my, my thing is, I'm with Mr. Richardson, nothing else has a buffer at all down there on, on the other properties. Uh, so I, don't, I, I think this would be a, a, a good thing. But I did have one question for Mr. Scott. Uh, about the fences, does that need to be a condition? Um, let me let me uh, address that to Mr. Longmore or to staff. Is well, is that in the site plan approval? Well, they are on the concept site plan, and okay. I would also remind you that th those buffers on those two sides of the property are not asking a variance. Those fully meet the minimum standards of the comprehensive zoning ordinance, as first determined by Lugum staff, and second decided by the planning commission. So it's only the 65 foot along the highways that they're asking a variance from. I'm, I'm not asking about the, sure. the buffers themselves. That they, they said that they would put a fence, but. And I would say they're obligated to put a fence because it's on the concept plan. I think the most important clarification to be made tonight, um, should you make a decision to approve a plan, is to um, be clear which plan. So for instance, <clears throat> He um, mentioned that the plan staff showed was not necessarily the plan he was showing you. Um, the important thing is that the Director of Land Use and Growth Management must, at the time of major site plan approval, verify that it is in conformance with the concept plan approved by the Planning Commission in August of last year. Okay. That had a condition <clears throat> that it have the 65-foot buffer yard variance approved by your board. So right. for instance, Ms. Delahaye's interest in negotiating an alternative size. But I think the important thing is that if, if, if the majority of the board likes the exhibit presented by the applicant, then you should name that exhibit number so that we know exactly which version of the plan we're approving. Okay. So the answer, of course, is no. We don't need okay. to mention the well, fence. Well, well, yeah. Which exhibit then do we need to make? Um, Stacy or okay. this I'm part of it up right now. Identify that. Um, approved concept plan. Would um, well, no, I would go with the um, the applicant's exhibit. Okay. Because that's what he showed yeah, you. Yeah, the in. applicant's presentation is exhibit four. And just to clarify, Mr. Knight, that is consistent with the approved concept plan. It just that was the applicant shows the reduced the applicant statement his testimony yes. his sworn okay. testimony and it will be the director's okay. right. responsibility to verify that should this move forward for a final major site plan approval. okay thank you so that'd be exhibit four and mr um, scott i can clarify that 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 exhibit also um included the other condition of a right in right out entrance on route five that was the significant difference between the two plans okay. uh, and that was presented to the planning commission and they did review that so thank you just Mr. so the Longmore. record's clear thank you find the exhibit number on mr brown any comments it for uh yes i uh i i am in support of this uh the uh the fact that the properties all around it are commercial the fact you're putting the they're volunteering to put up that fence which traps any trash the fact that they're going to be putting the, uh, shall we say, a B buffer, or, or put it this way, a lot more foliage than they normally expected for that, that, what was it, 17, 18, 19 foot variable buffer around the property. Uh, I don't think you can ask for much more, uh, given the fact, and I already brought that out, that the uh, property, uh, it was sort of like you bought a small piece of property and built a mansion on it and then complained because you don't have any yards. But but in forgetting that, I think uh, we've uh, 
I think we beat the horse to death. Okay. I am in favor. Somebody like to try a motion? Yeah, I might I might need some help before this is over, but I'm gonna do the best I can. <laughs> In the matter of VAAP number 19-132-001, Callaway 711, having made the finding that the standards for granting a variance and the objectives of section 63.3 buffer yards and schedules. Let's see, buffer yards and schedule 63.3 Point A, buffer yard standards of the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance have been met. I move to approve the variance request to reduce the 65 foot type B buffer along the Maryland Route 5 and 249 uh, to a 19 foot B buffer varying in size buffer and as shown on exhibit number four presented by the applicant. Well, that shows, I second. That shows the right in right up. We have a motion and, and, and I, a second. And I move this. Motion be approved. I second. Okay, motion and Mr. Brown is second. And, and Mr. Mr. Chairman, this, this is Chris Long. I, I sincerely apologize for interrupting. Just to clarify the motion, I believe Mr. Speech had testified that along um, Piney Point Road, it, it does vary down to 15 feet along that road. I just want to make sure the motion uh, considers that if the board so chooses. Uh, it, it included the word variable it did. Yeah. and it He's... named the exhibit that Mr. Speech right. was de was was okay. presenting. Right. Yeah. I agree. So um, go well, thank you very much. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Has okay, it been we have a motion and a second. Mr. Brown seconded it and I'll call for the vote. Yes. 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 John? Yes. Okay. An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30 day period follows from the date of the order, from the date the order is signed, during which any aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to the circuit court. Any action taken during that time must be at your own risk. We will mail a copy of the order once it is signed, and I'm sure you could call Andrews and Growth Management and pick it up. Okay, thank you. Now, do we need to take a, a break so you can get the next? Yes, I gotta get my computer back up. One, I suggest, how long, five minutes? I say, let's take a 10 minute break. Okay. I appreciate thank that, Chairman. I've gotta get across thank you. the parking lot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board member. Mr. Chairman.
<laughs> uh, we're calling a meeting back to order, the Board of Appeals meeting for January 14th. Uh, I will now call our next case and I will ask Stacy to remember she has been sworn in and if she would give the staff report for the appeals case. Okay, Matt's gone. <laughs> okay, for Town Creek Marina. There we go. We've got a public hearing for January 14th, 2021 for ZAAP 20 1746 Town Creek Marina. The applicant is requesting to appeal the decision of the Director of the Department of Land Use and Growth Management. The Director, um, the decision was the applicant's development sketch for residential development that did not meet the setback standards and the base density standards of Schedule 32.1 of the St. Mary's County Zoning Ordinance. The property was posted and legal ads were sent to the neighbors within 200 feet on December 29, 2020. And it was printed in the local newspaper, the Southern Maryland News on December 25th and January 1st, um, <coughs> 2001, or two, two, 2021. Okay, the property appellants uh, is Town Creek Marina and Greg Burkhart. They're being represented by Billy Mahaffey. The location of the property is at 238008 and 23900 North Patuxent Beach Road in California. This is lots 9 through 17 and 22 and part of 8 of section four of the leverings. They're also known as parcels A and B. Um, parcel in the RM is 0.73 acres and 1.16 acres in the commercial marina. The zoning is RM and CM and the overlay is LDO with BMO overlay. Okay, it is located on Patuxent, um, um, Patuxent Beach Road, on North Patuxent Beach Road, on Route 4, as you um, near the bridge. We've got Commercial Marine is um, highlighted in blue, and the Residential Mixed Density is highlighted in the light yellow, the cream colored. Okay, here's the development sketch that was submitted by the applicant. It is proposing three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, single family dwelling units. Okay, and that is all I have. Is there any questions? Any questions? No. No. Mr. Brown, any questions? No. Okay. Um, next, I guess we'll have the appellant and Chris Longmore, I think it is you again. Is that correct? It, it is, Mr. Okay. Chairman, thank you. And if I could, I will administer the oath at this time. And as we did before, we'll have uh, the members stand up as I call their names. Please stand, raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And the list of folks that I have are uh, Greg Bur Burkhart. Yes. Laura Clark. She's not loved. Uh, Ms. Clark is not uh, participating tonight. She was unable to be here. Okay. Billy Mahaffey. He, he must Did be mute. Say yes, Billy. I think. I think you're muted, Billy. Yes. Is this mic go. working better? That's Much good. Better. That's good. Um, yes. Okay. okay. Did I miss anybody, Mr. Longmore? Uh, Bill, uh, no, I think. 
Right. Th those were all our witnesses. I okay. believe Mr. Hunt and Mr. Knight are going to be testifying for Mr. Murphy for the county. Okay. And it's up to you. Your turn. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I guess what uh, I'll start with a couple of comments. Um, and our primary presentation will be based upon the testimony of Mr. Mahaffey um, this evening. And, and if it pleases the board, um, after my initial comments, I'm going to share my screen with a PowerPoint and put up my exhibits as I walk Mr. Mahaffey through them and ask him to testify um, about the various slides. Um, and as staff mentioned, we're really here talking about two groups of lots tonight. And I'd, I'd like to say from the outset, um, as a way of an introduction to, to um, our, our case tonight, is that this um, appeal isn't a little bit or isn't a unique posture. Um, we're not here reviewing um, an application for building permits. We're not here reviewing an application for site plan. There, there really was not a formal application that gave rise to this appeal uh, tonight. Um, I'll walk Mr. Mahaffey through um, some of the, the documents to show you how this was presented to the county. Um, but a, as a result of, of an inquiry by my client on, on um, a proposed um, development plan for some of these lots, uh, we received back from the county um, a, a formal or, or a straight disapproval uh, with the notice that it was a final decision that if we disagreed with it, we, we would be required to appeal to you tonight. So that's what, what led us here um, in front of you. Um, I, I'll know just to, just to frame the issues in the beginning a little bit, um, there are two sets of, of lots as we talked about. One set is zone residential medium use, one is zone um, commercial marine. Um, there were two decisions uh, cited in the disapproval of our request for for feedback on the plan. One was a denial based on the residential medium use property because one of the um, outlines of, of a potential future structure um, appeared to be over the 10 foot side yard setback. Um, that was disapproved straight out with, without any feedback. We don't think that was appropriate. We think it was premature. Uh, there really wasn't an application for a building permit or anything of the kind. Um, and I think it, went, it ran afoul of the county's normal process of allowing applicants uh, to be told that and seek a variance if they, they want a variance from the side yard setbacks. Um, and we don't think that is the main issue here, though, tonight. That alone probably would not lead to this appeal. The main issue that we will focus on, although we will address that, that setback issue, um, is an interpretation by the, by the county of the word site in the definitional section of the zoning ordinance. That's really why we're here tonight. And really we're focused on the properties that are zoned commercial marine. And Mr. Mahaffey and I will walk through and show you what those properties are. Um, if I recall correctly, there are six uh, recorded lots that are part of that, at least six, and I think part of a, of a seventh, but at least six lots that are part of that. Um, and the county has interpreted the word site to say that my client is only allowed one house on all six lots uh, because they view it as one entire site where my client was seeking guidance um, on a plan that would allow them to build one house on each lot. Um, the effect of the, of the county's decision is probably obvious to the board um, that we're here appealing tonight, that it dramatically reduces uh, the ability of my client to use his property. It would dramatically devalue the property um, and we believe it's an interpretation that has not been applied to other properties uh, before, but I'm sure that'll come out in the testimony from Mr. Knight or Mr. Hunt. Um, so um, because the, it was a, an interpretation of that issue, a legal determination by the county that that definition and, and it applied to, to um, a provision within the ordinance would restrict the development to only one dwelling unit on, the, on all six lots, um, we felt that we needed to appeal based on the fact uh, that it was presented to us as a final decision of the director. So that that's how we ended up before you. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now um, and begin the PowerPoint that'll have a couple other introductory topics. And then Billy, I'll, I'll start asking you questions about the slides that hopefully you'll be able to see on um, the screen as I share. Um, 
to Mr. Chairman, is my is my screen showing to the to the board members? Are you, are you all able to see it? Um, if it says ZAAP 201746 Town Creek Marina slash Burkhart Appeal, Chris T. Longmower, or Duke. That's Duke, correct. That's what I see. That's ours. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, again, a, a, as a brief summary. Um, and, and to give you a little background, this uh, the potential development of this project has been ongoing for, for many years, for several years. Um, and the Department of Land Use and Growth Management has worked with uh, really the applicants. Mr. Burkhardt owns some of the property individually, and there's an LLC uh, that's listed, Town Creek Marine LLC, that owns the other properties. Um, over the years, regarding the potential uh, development of the project, um, what, what gave rise to us being here tonight is that the applicant for Mr. Mahaffey submitted a letter with a um, sketch to the, to the staff asking uh, them to review it and to discuss a proposed process going forward uh, to develop the, the property. And again, what we received back or what Mr. Mahaffey received back was a formal disapproval stating that it was a final decision subject to an appeal before this board. Um, we did not, as I mentioned, seek any formal building permit applications or site plan applications. Uh, the, the cover sheet that was submitted with it made that clear that it was uh, checked other and, and asked uh, for the, the, the zoning review of this. Um, and we believe that the appeal tonight is, you know, so there, and, and I raised that and I've said that a couple of times to make it clear that there's a lot of things that are not part of this appeal. It really is a narrow appeal. Um, one is relating to that side yard setback issue. And did the planning director incorrectly apply, uh, incorrectly disapprove that? But again, as stated in that first issue listed there, is did the planning director incorrectly apply the definition of site in relation to the commercial marine zone properties? Um, so with that, I'm going to start asking Mr. Mahaffey to clarify and uh, confirm some of the next slides. So um, what, I, what I'm showing on, on this slide, which is our, our slide number four, um, is an aerial photo of of a portion of the neighborhood we're on. And Billy, can you see that slide on your computer? Yes, I can. Okay, and does, do you see the, the commercial marine property in the very upper right-hand corner of that aerial photo from the county GIS map? Yes, I do. It, it it sort of it sort of wraps around that that last finger of Town Creek, the water body okay. of Town Creek. Okay, and so and so the the property we're talking about is that it's almost a, a C shaped property, you know, that kind of wraps around that that finger, as you said. Very good description. Okay, and then to to the immediate left of that, along the the road that that fronts that just above the water, is the um, residential mixed use property we're talking about. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I think residential medium density. Um, That's correct. Lots, lots, lots. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, and, and the the property I just circled is that that residential medium density property. Yes, yes. and it's it's bounded by. North Patuxent Beach Road and St. Clair Road. Okay, okay. And then the property that I'm now, I, I found a way to, to draw on this. This is the property that we're talking about that is zoned commercial marine property that, that I just drew around there. Is that correct? Yeah, that, is, that is correct. It, it, it was shown very well on the staff's um, zoning map that they showed. Okay. And th this also shows a, a, some of the neighborhood that is surrounding these properties, correct? That is that is correct. And you've uh, you've had a chance to be in the neighborhood on, on multiple times working on this project, and and you're familiar somewhat with that neighborhood. Is that correct? I, I am very familiar with this property. Okay, and and I'll show you a second slide that kind of slid to the to the right, if you will, um, showing. And this is the. The, the boat yard that's next to the property we're talking about, correct? Correct. And then over here is, is some of the other neighborhood that is referred to as the Leverings subdivision. Um, I, I'm not seeing exactly where you're pointing, Chris, uh, but but yeah, closer to the east, more to the east uh, of the... Okay. Chris, draw your circles around whatever you're talking about. Okay, and, and I guess what I'm asking, Mr. Mahaffey, does this show kind of the other side of the neighborhood uh, where our client's property is located? 
Uh, yes, it does, and you know, and you can and you can very clearly see the the overpass, you know, the the bridge, the road heading over to Solomon's there. Yeah, and this is Governor Thompson Bridge here. Is that Governor Thomas Bridge there? Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, and this neighborhood is primarily residential, other than some of the other marine uses that are in the area. Is that correct? I mean that that is that is absolutely correct. Okay, most of them are single-family detached dwellings. Yes. Is that fair to say? I, I would say the greatest majority is single-family, single-family residential. Okay, and then this is a closer-up version of the aerial photo um, that that we just looked at. And again, the the commercial marine property that we're here discussing the the interpretation of the county of the of the term site. It's this property that we're we're talking about. Is that correct? That that is that is the that is the property. Yes, it is. Okay, and, and then again, just for for reference for the board, the the residential medium density property is this section of the property that's shown here. Is that correct? That is that is correct. Okay. Now, I'll also show this is an excerpt of the zoning map. I, th I think this may have been part of the, the staff presentation as well. Um, again, showing the different zoning categories. Again, the blue is representing commercial marine, um, and the the tan or, or the cream colored um, is the residential medium density, as you understand it. Is that correct? That is that is correct. And these numbers I superimposed on those, uh, so the board is aware. Those are, are the addresses that are referenced in the staff report in case this assists the, the board members to determine which property was which address. Do, do they look like the correct addresses? They do, and it, and it is very interesting to note that because, because the, you know, and when I was, when the director made the decision that, that he made, he referred to them by address and I had referred to them by tax map parcel. So, so it was, you know, I had to figure out what the address was. So, yes. And so, Okay, so these numbers are provided to, to the board members and we can refer to it if you need to, if that is assist. I know sometimes the addresses are easier uh, to, to follow in, in these hearings. Um, the, the next slide, Billy, that, that we have is um, a, a sketch and, and this is the sketch I think we're here talking about, I believe it was in, in the staff report as well. And this is a sketch that you prepared, correct? Um, yeah, yes, that is correct. Okay. And this is one that was submitted to the to the county along with your cover letter that is shown on this slide, which is slide number nine in our presentation. Do you see that? That, that is that, that both of those statements are true. That that is the sketch that I submitted along with this letter. Okay. And and can you describe kind of your purpose in submitting uh, this letter and the sketch to the county? What you were you're asking the county to do when you submitted it? Well, well, yes, yes. Um, obviously, this this land has had a historical use. We were proposing to change that. Uh, we had had previous discussions with the department um, that that proposed to proceed in a in a residential development on this land, and we had had favorable favorable. Um, receipt you know reception on that so we were trying to get that ball rolling and i wanted to find out what was the process that we would follow because because there are many variances and there are a lot of steps that have to go through this project um, um it, you know there there are there are a lot of just issues that are involved and i and i just wanted to get a handle on those before we got before we got into some processing procedure. Okay, so so you didn't intend this to be any type of formal application. It was more one, uh, as, as I think you said, seeking a path forward. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, looking for a path forward. Um, yeah, a process forward is what I said. You know, to to, yeah. to develop a process to move forward. Um, and that's it. And I'm circling a portion of your letter here. That was the. That's right. Request you had at the end of your your cover letter is that? Yeah, that a, a, absolutely. That's that's what the purpose of the submittal was. Okay. And, and now, Mr. Mahaffey, you had this is the the decision you got back 
um, I believe you received it by email and then also got a copy of the notes in, in the county's filing system. Is, is this the response you received from, from the director upon submittal of your request? Yeah, yes, that is, that is the response that I received. Okay, and, and so if I could just kind of kind of highlight this for, you know, again, for the board to clarify the decision we're here uh, appealing tonight. The, the first related uh, to this um, statement that says the um, proposed building does not conform with a minimum 10 foot side yard setback. You see where I underline that? I, yeah, I, I see that and, and, and that was the response. That, that is the response. And that's the 23880 property. That's the property that is zoned uh, medium use resident or residential medium density. Is that, 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 is that correct? correct. And, and if that, then there was particularly on lot 14 that showed the encroachment in the side yard. Okay, so that the is lot, the lot bounded by St. Clair and North Patuxent Beach. And is this, the, did I circle the right lot there? On it, your in, sketch? Indeed, indeed, that's that is the correct lot circle. Okay, and, and the area that they issued a, a formal disapproval to you was relating to this little corner of the structure. Yes. That touched the 10 foot setback line, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Now the, the second part of the denial that, that you received related to what they identified as 23900 North Patuxent Beach Road, correct? Correct. And that was this commercial marine property that we looked at on the zoning map with yes. that overlay to give to give that um, to give it some context. Yes, yes. And in that um, in that one they discussed you know, the proposal to replace an existing commercial building and one detached single family dwelling unit with five new dwelling units. Um, and, and the response was this does not conform with schedule 32.1 of the comprehensive zoning ordinance. Um, and they reference a note four, which reads one single family dwelling is permitted per site. Do you see that? Yes, yeah, that, that's, that's, that is what that denial says, yes. Okay, and then, oh, I apologize, I skipped the slide. And then it looks like, and I believe what the director did next, and, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, that he then quoted the definition of site from the back of the zoning ordinance where the, where the definitions are found within the ordinance. Is that, that, is that correct? That, that, is, that is correct. Okay. Um, and it, and this is the uh, quote of the of the definition of site yes. that that is found in that ordinance. You've looked at it since then, correct? Oh, I've looked at it many times. Okay. Yes, that's that's so, the so, definition of site. And this is the full substance of the denial that was received from the director. Is that correct? Y yes, I, I believe that is the the full substance, as you said. Okay. Now, you've been working on this project a long time before you had submitted the letter this summer to the, or this past summer to the planning director. Is that fair to say? Yes, yeah, I've been working on this project for probably 10 years. We, we've, we've looked at several development scenarios with this. Okay, and during the course of your time, have you had a chance to look at some of the title and plats and other documents relating to the, the property? Yeah, it is. it is very reasonable and it's something we always do is we look at the boundary of the property so we went back to the original subdivision plat okay and i've shown you what is our 11th slide um that that i'll represent to the board is a copy of a plat that i obtained from the plat records of st mary's county um, and it is the plat reference referenced um, on the SDAT uh, tax records, among other things, for the property we're discussing. Is this a plat you've seen before, Mr. Mahaffey? Yes, oh yeah, that's that's the plat of this subdivision. Okay, I will note for the board, uh, so the record is clear, the copy of my PowerPoint that was presented to staff had a, a, a typographical area under the folio of this plat. The correct plat was provided, but it had 328 where it is shown in red here, it should be page 428, just so the record is clear. Um, so, so Mr. Mahaffey, going back to, to the site we're talking about on the commercial marine side in particular, is this the portion of the plat 
that relates to the property we're talking about tonight? Y yes, yes. It, and that's when you, read, when you read the deed, when you read the deed and you go through the meets and bounds description, it, it describes part of lot eight, lot nine, lot 10, lot 11, lot 12, um, and then 22. Okay. And I'm going to try to blow this up a little. Well, here, I'll show you on the next slide. Okay. Yeah, because I think I left out lot, lot 11. I mean, 13. That, that might be a, a little easier to to show you. Now, now, before I do that, this is a pretty old plat, correct? It, it, it is an old plat. But this, as you said here tonight, is it your understanding that this is a plat that's recorded among the plat records of St. Mary's and it's the most recent plat on record for these lots? Yes, it's it's the original subdivision plat, the, the document that created these lots from a larger parcel. Okay, and as far as you know, this is the most recent plat that's been recorded. There hasn't been a newer one recorded. Is that fair to say? As, as far as I know, and it's substance, substantively the same as any other I've seen. Okay, and this was, the date of the plat as shown in plat records was September 28th of 1927. Does that sound accurate based on your it, review of the plat? I know, it, I know it's, it's, it was a very old subdivision. Okay. So. Now I'll show you a, a blow up of the property. This is another, this is a portion of that plat just to, to, to show the board members. And, and again, the lots that are subject to and are now zoned commercial marine that relate to the question of whether this has one site with one house or whether it's multiple lots that are allowed a house on each lot. These are the lots that, that are shown on that plat that we're talking about tonight, is that correct? That that is correct, and and to belabor the point, when you, when you look at the meets and bounds description of the <laughs> deed, it it describes part of lot eight, lot nine, through lot thirteen, and then lot twenty two on on, okay. on the west side of St. Clair Street. Okay, and and then the residential mixed use property we're talking about are these four lots shown on this side of the plot? Is that in, in, indeed, that is correct. Okay, so this is the RM property now, and this is the, the CM property, is that correct? That is that is correct. Okay, and you were referring to lot numbers just to, to I know this is an old plat and may be hard to see, but for example, when, when you reference lot number nine, on this plat, there's a number nine that I'm circling on this lot, is that what you understand to be lot number nine on this plot? Indeed it is, indeed it is. And then again, this is number 10, correct? Correct. And then 11 is here? Yes. Number 12 is here? 13 is correct. there. Yep, 13 is here. And then you mentioned lot 22, is this? Yes. Lot 22, okay. And, and these, Again, this is an older plat, but I, I know you've been doing this type of work for some time. Is this a typical um, type of drawing on a plat for this era? You know, is this what a plat would look like in the 20s or 30s? You know, the sure. modern ones look different now. Sure, there, uh, there's nothing unusual about that plat. I mean, it, it's 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 it was it was customary to do a plat of that nature at that time frame. Okay. Okay. Great. Now you said that you've been working on this project for, for approximately 10 years. Was there a time when you were working with the Department of Land Use and Growth Management um, approximately, I, I guess, six to, to seven years ago? And, and I'm showing you a letter uh, in relation to that time period. Yeah, yes, and, and just, okay. just to um, kind of give some history, we had looked at doing a traditional marina here we had looked at doing a boat yard for boat repairs. The, the, the property was actively marketed in those ways. It was unsuccessful. We also looked at doing a restaurant on the property. And so what, what we kind of backed up and said, we need to put this land back into its original intent as residential lots um, and, and, and attempt to, de to de market it that way. Okay. And, and as part of that, did you work with the Department of Land Use and Growth Management 
during this time period of June of 2014, roughly, you know, in that time period it, it, to discuss your approach? Y yes, we, we had several meetings with, with several agencies prior to that date. Okay. And is this a letter, this appears to be a letter addressed to you, and I'll show the second page of the letter on our next slide. And it appears to be addressed to you from Philip Shire, who was then Director of Land Use and Growth Management. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Now, now, this letter appears to be in response to them reviewing um, some information you'd provided to them about the potential redevelopment of the site we're talking about today. Is that, that a fair statement? That is correct. It, it is not, it is not the, the exhibit that the decision was based on, but, but it was very similar to that. I had, I had prepared okay. an exhibit similar to that. Okay. So this one predates anything that Mr. Hunt had seen, that exhibit that Mr. Hunt had reviewed. Oh, is absolutely. That correct? Absolutely. And, and it had a different configuration than the one in some ways that you presented to Mr. Hunt. Slightly different. It was a slightly different configuration. But this letter did consider whether or not single family dwellings could be built on each of the lots that are in the commercial marine district in particular. Is that a fair statement? That, that is that is that is absolutely a fair statement. Um, yeah, that that's the way the discussion was going at that point. Okay. And, and this is a letter that you received during this time period. And I'll highlight a, a couple of the points of it and just ask if you have any recollection of it. Okay. Uh, it, be, it starts off by saying that Mr. Shire and his staff had met with Ren Siri, the director of the Maryland Critical Area Commission, and two of his environmental planners. Is it your understanding that the Luggum staff had consulted with the Critical Area Commission um, in, in, in relation to your general proposal to put a house on each lot? Well, well, in as much as that, you know, the summary letter says that they did, but 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 I was pretty serious about to getting information and in a way to proceed with this, the development of this project or the redevelopment of this property. So I was I was glad that that he sought out the Critical Area Commission because they they don't have a lot to say about it. Okay, and at that time he references what's called a doctrine of merger. And it looks like, you know, at least from, from the opinion in his letter at that time, it says lot consolidation will not be required for redevelopment. Do you see that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Because that was as that long. Is. Okay. And it says as long as the lot lines of the original subdivision are not altered. Is that? That, that, that is correct. That statement there? Yeah, yeah, that was a very important, you know, finding to make. <laughs> Okay, and the original subdivision was it your understanding that the original subdivision is this subdivision plat that, that you and I just talked about a few minutes ago? Yeah, yes, it is. I mean, absolutely. Okay, and um, it then goes on to discuss the fact that in footnote fourteen of Schedule thirty two point one of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, it states that one single family dwelling is permitted per site. Do you see that? Yes. And that's the footnote that, that Mr. Hunt based his decision on to the best of your knowledge. Is that fair to say? That is, that is fair to say. It, it might be interesting to some people to note that that says note 14. And, right. and at the end of 2019, the ordinance was revi revised, scheduled 32, and, and now that's note four. Right. And, and I'll note, um, for the record to the board, and certainly um, we're happy to discuss this, the, the zoning, or, and just to make it clear to the public, the zoning ordinance that is online on the county website um, as a whole ordinance does not include all the recent amendments that have been made to the ordinance. I believe Mr. Mahaffey is referring to um, a series of amendments that were done, I, I believe at the conclusion of the Lexington Park development plan um, I will note for the board and, and so the public ha has access or easy access to it rather, a copy of that is attachment three to our exhibit four on board docs, the full version of that. Um, I, I will note for the record that the language of that footnote um, and where it was located on the chart did not change at all in those amendments, um, it, but some of the other footnotes were removed. So instead of there being a whole bunch of them, 
to the chart in question, um, there are many fewer. So it changed from footnote 14 to footnote four. So I appreciate you, you pointing that out, um, Mr. Mahaffey. Um, and, and then it goes on um, to discuss um, the site. And I guess what I, I'd highlight for the board in this letter is it talked about residential development and redevelopment um, and it talks about principal structures throughout. Um, it talks about um, a maximum of a thousand square feet of existing lot coverage in the bu buffer on each lot. Um, you can see that reference in, in paragraph three here. Yes. Um, and then in the second page of this letter, it went on um, to discuss the, the percentage of the various lots based on their, their square footage. Um, it also went on to say the buffer on each lot must be established. Um, and there's other examples in this, and the board can certainly uh, um, look at it. Um, it appears that this letter throughout um, applied these findings to different lots. And was it your conclusion in reading this that the staff of land use and in interpreting the same provision we're here talking about tonight in 2000? 14 agreed that a dwelling unit could be allowed on each lot as long as you met the other requirements in the zoning ordinance. Is that a fair statement? That, that is that is exactly the way they interpret this letter. Okay. And did you have any other conversations or communications with the staff during that time uh, that suggested that to you, you know, during the time of this letter? Um. The, the, the only other comment of significance is, is that in an effort in an effort to minimize the footprint, I had suggested duplexes, single family attached dwellings to be shared on a property line in an, you know in an effort to um, to minimize footprint, if you will. And, and I was asked, you know in the same time frame of, of the uh, denial, if you will, to make those single families uh, and not okay. multifamily. Okay. So that's and when the you say you, that's the change. When you when you talk about duplexes, was that before this letter from Mr. Shire? Or was it kind of in the in between period I, between? I, I think that I was I was looking to to limit the footprint in the critical areas when I was working with with Mr. Shire. Okay. You know now the sketch the sketch that I produced. In that same time frame, showed duplexes. The, the duplexes stayed on the sketch until shortly, you know, maybe May before the July denial. Okay, before the denial you submitted last year in 2020, or the, yes, the sketch you I, submitted in 2020. I, I, okay. I revised that sketch based on input from the staff. Okay. Now I'm going to. Um, just go through a couple of the, the zoning ordinance provisions that that appear to be relevant, just ask you to confirm that for the board. Um, you know, we've been talking about the sketch showing uh, dwell detached dwelling units on it. Those are typically single family dwelling units. Is that a correct statement? Um, you know, I'm not sure I followed your question, but but we, we have suggested single family detached dwelling units on each of these lots. And that is that is common in this neighborhood. Okay. And, and you're familiar with Schedule 54 of the Zoning Ordinance, which is the table of uses within the yes. Zoning Ordinance. Yes, is that I, correct? I'm familiar with that table. And, and I'll note for the board that, that, like the other provision we discussed a few minutes ago, uh, that table of uses was also amended in 2019, and the full ordinance that includes that is Attachment 3 to our Exhibit 4 on, on board docs. Um, so, so the use that you were, you know, suggesting in your sketch and asking for feedback from was for detached dwelling units. Is that correct? That is correct. That is okay. correct. And am I correct that on the use chart in the commercial marine district that we're talking about, the dwelling units are labeled as permitted uses in that district, correct? Well, footnote four, footnote four allows them to be one per site. You know, so it's right, but in, in the table, of, right, and we haven't gotten there yet. That, that's in Schedule 32.1, right? But in the in the table of uses that lists 
all the different uses and i can i can pull up a copy and share that with you if you need a bill I'm, uh, I'm gonna look it up real quick because i think i can do that faster Yes, you're absolutely correct. Um, okay. Schedule Schedule fifty dot four list list single family residential as a permitted use in the CMZ. Okay. And, and and this is a table that I'm sure the board members are, are somewhat familiar with. That's a table that lists all possible uses of property down the right, and then across the top of the chart, it shows all the zoning categories in our county, and it tells you whether it's permitted or not, or whether it's some whether it's a limited use or conditional use correct yeah that is correct okay and for this use it is permitted um in commercial marine correct that is correct it is not limited and it is not a conditional use it's a full permitted use it's correct? A permitted use okay and uh, i'll show you below it what is the purpose of commercial marine district and i pulled this again from the amendment that, that we've attached to our, to our documents. And the, the board can read this. It talks about it being a district that allows marine sales and services, and it, and it discusses marinas and boatyards and other um, things that are allowed there. And then do you see at the end of that where it says the uses allowed in the CM zoning district are identified in Schedule 54 use classifications? You, you, you there. The, the last sentence of that paragraph says that yes it does okay so, yes, so in the very purpose clause of the commercial marine district it points to schedule 54.4 and in that schedule it says that this use is permitted on commercial marine districts correct that, that is correct and then this is not a, necessarily an excerpt from the um zoning ordinance but i'll, I'll share with the board um, this is a list of all the other uses that are allowed in the commercial marine district. I've highlighted the one we're speaking about tonight, use number 15, dwelling unit detached. Um, but these are, are, are the other ones. And, and Billy, I know you're not going to go item by item, but does this look, list appear to be accurate to you based on, on your experience and, uh, and review of this case? Um, it, it, it looks very reasonable. I mean, we could check. I think the one that's really appropriate for us to, to, to focus on is 15, the dwelling unit detached. Right. right. But this does show that there's other non-marine uses that are allowed in commercial marine districts, correct? Like bed and breakfast could go. That, that is correct. Okay. Or farmer's markets or, or the other, the, the daycare is another one that's allowed there. Right. Now, over here, I'll, I'll share with the board. <laughs> And this can be compared to the ordinance that's in the record. I did this for East the board to just show you the other types of uses that are allowed um, in the commercial marine district that are not non-marine uses. I did not list those on this chart, uh, kind of the, the obvious things like marinas and stuff that are allowed in the chart. But there are also conditional uses in that zone, such as campgrounds and construction material um, equipment. And then there are also limited uses in there um, Billy, just so the board, and I know they know this for conditional uses, they're allowed in districts, but you got to meet certain conditions in order to get an approval above and beyond normal conditions. Is that a fair statement? Well, absolutely. And in fact, it, a conditional use has to be approved by the board of appeals. Right. So they've heard. And then a limited, and then a limited use, you have to meet all the normal standards and then it may be limited in other ways. Is that well, well when, you, when you look in the use standards, when you look in the use standards in the ordinance, as you have said, there are permitted uses, there are there are conditional uses and there are limited standards. And then frequently there are standards, additional standards when it's when it's permitted as a limited use. Okay. But for the use we're here to talk about, as you you know so eloquently said that we should focus on, the dwelling unit detached is a full permitted use. It is not a conditional use in the commercial marine district, and it is not a limited use, correct? It's neither of those, and it's not a not permitted use. Okay, so it, it is fully permitted. Um, the next highlight of the zoning ordinance I'm going to show you, and this is a, a little fuzzy the way it came out. I just noticed. I apologize, board members. But part of what 
uh, Mr. Hunt had based this decision on according to the communication you received was schedule 32 of the zoning ordinance, correct? Um, that is correct. And, and that's a rather large chart. I, I excerpted the portion that we're talking about tonight that has various development standards um, that must be met in each of the zoning categories of our county, correct? Um, yes, and, and what, what you focused on there is the density right. of, the, of right. the, so, that particular zoning district. So this shows the base density right here, right? That's what this row that I've highlighted is. Is that correct? Yes, that's exactly correct. And just, and just for the board members to give them a frame of reference, these uh, three letter, for the most part, references are the different zoning categories in our county. Correct. So that is, that is across correct. the top, and the zoning category relating to the lots that that are at issue here in the definition of site is the commercial marine district, and, and this is the the column of this chart that relates to that. Correct? Yes, that that is the column that we're interested in. But it might be good to note also that the RM zoning district allows one unit per five acres. Right. So, uh, so on that other property. Or it allows one, one to five units for every neighbor. Okay. Now on the on the commercial marine ones, and I know this is fuzzy, but just to give the board, you know, kind of the provisions that we're here talking about tonight, it says none, and then it references note four. Correct. That is correct. And then this is footnote four on the second part of this chart, which again I know the language is fuzzy, and I apologize. I'll read it to the board. It says one single family dwelling is permitted per site. Yes. You see that? Okay. So that is the footnote upon which you understand our denial was based by the director. Is that? That, that okay. is true. Okay. And um, uh, the definition of site was included in the um, director's decision. And, yes. and here is another copy of that should the board need it that might be a little easier to read than, than the prior one. Um, and, and again, this reads any track, lot, or parcel of land or combination of tracks, lots, or parcels of land, which are in one ownership or are contiguous and in diverse ownership, where development is to be performed as part of a unit, subdivision, or project, as shown on an application. Correct? That, that, I mean, that's, that is correct. And, and I did a quick word search. That term is used approximately 156 times in our in the zoning ordinance online that's been amended so that might not be an accurate number uh, but the version that's online it, it's used that time so that term is used in a variety of contexts correct yes site is used in many contexts that that term can be used i mean one one of the most obvious is in the site plan process right that that word is included in in that that i know this board is, is familiar with yes um, site, site plan so, so my understanding, and I'll ask you to confirm from, from the director's decision, is that staff acknowledges that one dwelling unit is allowed in commercial marine districts, but only on a site, only one per site. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. And their decision is that even though I believe we have six lots in the commercial marine district where where our property is located, they have deemed that to only be one site. Is that your understanding? That, that is that is the way I interpret Mr. Hunt's letter. Now, have you ever seen, you know, in your, uh, you've been doing this for, for many years in the county, right? Development work in the county? Yes. Have you ever seen that term site used in that way before? Meaning that the staff in some way has said that even though there may be multiple lots, they all have to be treated as one site for density. Have you ever seen it applied this way? It, I have seen it. I have seen it applied that way a couple of times, but I don't know that it ever that it ever affected a project like this one before. Now, and my understanding of how this definition has been used at times is to say that you may have multiple lots, but you can develop them as one site if you wish to do so, correct? That is correct. But but the, the internal lot lines could be could be 
ignored or you know just looks it's a site even though there might be several parcels involved right so an example if, if you were watching earlier was the 7-eleven case we had before uh tonight there were two lots on it but it was one site that was be de being developed with one project so is that the type of example where you might have two lots but put one commercial structure across both of them and the county does not require you always to remove the lot line y yes that 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 is what i'm referring to okay now i'm gonna um this is just to to get into the the, the side yard setback just to show uh, the board again, and we had highlighted it on the other one. The second basis of the director's decision was that um, the, the side yard setback and their residential medium intensity property crossed the 10 foot side yard setback line, and so it was disapproved. <laughs> you saw that part of it. Have you ever had a disapproval on something like this when you were just seeking? you know, the information you were seeking in this case? Um, I mean, really, I, I've never seen anything like that. I, I think it's it's kind of obvious that that, that point is, is, is focused on in the decision. But if you look at lot nine and 10, if you look at those, the setback is much greater. The, the, in, the, in, the encroachment into the setback on those lots is the lots are very restricted very restricted by the side yard setbacks and that's one of the issues that we have to deal with so that was a thing that i was looking at how to handle those numerous variances that will be required the side yard setbacks so this am i correct that what's showing on the screen now is not meant to seek a final approval for that location no it was more meant to seek advice on on how to proceed with the project exactly you, i was looking at and, how to proceed with restrictive lines where we've got a group of lots that are impacted the same way yeah and, and and would it be possible if this project is allowed to go forward using this one as an example to reconfigure that building so it does not encroach on the side yard setback the, the, that encroachment when you look at it numerically it's really about nine inches over the property line so yes the building could be made one foot narrower and it would fit and is it also possible to potentially seek a variance to encroach into I, the side yard I, I would think because this is an old subdivision i would think that seeking a variance would be an appropriate remedy to this solution to this problem okay. And none of those options were presented to you. It was just the denial you received. Just, just a denial, no, no offer of other ways to move forward. Okay. Mr. Mahaffey, do you have anything else you want to share with the board about the development or the decision that you find um, important to their consideration tonight, other than what we've gone over? I mean, not not really peculiar to to the decision we're making. I mean, it, it was it was kind of unprecedented to get a letter like that without any more discussion than we had. Okay. I, I think, but I don't know what bearing that has on this decision. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think those are the. I'm going to stop sharing my my screen here. Um, I think those are, are the questions I have of of Mr. Mahaffey at this time. Um, I know that Mr. Murphy has the right to, to ask any questions he desires, um, and and we had the right for rebuttal after Mr. Murphy's uh, case, so we do reserve the right to call Mr. Mahaffey if we need to um, clarify or address any of the issues raised in his case. But those are all the questions I have for him at this time. Mr. Murphy, do you have any questions of the applicant, appellant? Yes, thank you. Oops, I do. Yes, thank you. I was muted. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I certainly do. So, Mr. Mahaffey, uh, thank you for coming this evening. I, we haven't met before, but pleasure to meet you. Um, pleasure to meet you. So, again, you're familiar with the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance and the Lexington Park uh, Development Plan from 2019. Is that right? That is correct. And you're familiar with lot lines and setback requirements? Yes, yes, I am. And you, you've mentioned that this wasn't your first time submitting a sketch to Lugum for review. No, 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 the, n not at all. 
Right. And you've been looking at this property for about 10 years. Is that right? Every bit of that. And I'm going to share um, my screen as well. You should be able to do it. Uh, can you see this? Yes. Perfect. So this says development review application. Is that right at the top? Can you see that? Th that is correct. And it's dated around, let's see if I can highlight it. Um, right here, it says July 10th, 2020, it was received by Lugum. Is that right? Yes, that, that looks to be correct. And then down here, it says authorized agent signature, William Mahaffey, and that's you, is that right, and your signature? Yes, that's correct. And th so this was a, an application that you did submit. So you actually did submit an application for review, is that right? Um, yes, yes, I did. And it says other zoning review of development, is that right? Y yes. Okay. And, and I would like to add that that, you know, this, I've never done an application like this before. I was, sure. asked, I was asked to do this by the deputy director. Mm -hmm. and I did it and I put a cover letter with it because it was very peculiar. Right. No, I saw that. And I, we appreciate that. Um, so let's look at the the neighborhood. Can you see this now? I'm showing this is actually from your uh, attorney slide. Can I, you see this on I the screen? See, I can see it very well. So you mentioned that single family dwellings, uh, detached single family dwellings are common in the neighborhood. Do you remember saying that? Yes, sir. And that's what we see here on the left side of the screen mostly, right? Mostly. Are those... Right. Is that, is that, are those houses zoned commercial marine? Um, no. Okay. Let's look at the next page. On the next side, slide, we also see a number of single family detached dwellings. Is that right? Yes, you do. And are those zoned commercial marine? I, I would think they're not. I would think they're not. Yeah. Don't know. And we're now looking at what is marked as attachment 11. This is the sketch that you submitted with the letter and the application. Is that right? Y yes, it is. And you designed the sketch. That's your name at the bottom. I, I think I, I, I did. Or something like that. Yeah. Guilty as charged. <laughs> sure. So let's look at the property on the left. That's the 23880 North Patuxent property. Yes. So you, you mentioned um, before that you that Logan was the first ones that referred to these by their addresses. You had originally referred to them by their tax map parcel. Is that right? Yeah, and and lot number, subdivision lot number is the way we sure. usually refer right. to lots. And the parcel number, you referred to that because the tax map is by those that parcel number, parcel four. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. All of this land is referred to as parcel four. Right, and it's because it's all taxed as one property. Um, yes, it all it all occurs in one deed. Sure. So on the property on the left, with those four lots, it looks like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Uh, those are in the residential medium intensity, as you as you stated. Medium density, yes. And as you said, under the, you're familiar with the 2019 ordinance, um, and under that, the side yard septic is 10 feet, as we mentioned earlier. Y yes, that is correct. And so we'll zoom in a little bit. As we, we, just, we just went over this with your attorney, but you see the dotted 10 foot side yard setback line over here? Yeah, yeah. you asked me if I was familiar with those, and, I'm, and I said yeah. I was. I drew it, yeah. I drew it on this. Exactly. This, this, and so the proposed building goes beyond those 10 feet? Y yes, it does. And that would violate the setback requirement? It would. Okay. And all these are called, or not all, but most of them are called proposed buildings? Yes. Um, when asked what that meant, did you tell Harry Knight that you proposed single family homes? Um, if you don't remember, that's fine. I, but I, I, don't, I don't specifically remember, but I do remember putting duplexes on each of these or on each of them that where there were two together right. which is which is single family attached and right. and we decided to make them not to be worried about that use so we made them single family detached gotcha so 
what's written as proposed building or some version of single family dwelling is your proposal. Presently, it's attached, but it may turn back into detached. Or it presently, it's detached, but it may turn back into detached. I, I, I would not expect it to go back to detached. Sure, the, 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 the purpose for doing that was not to suggest using a use that was not permitted. It was to, it was solely to reduce the footprint within the buffer. Sure. Which okay. is which is a goal of the critical area. Okay, I had a question about this one all the way at the bottom. It's uh, it says existing building to be rebuilt, rebuilt over the existing footprint. What is that existing building, and what is going to be it, built over it, it? It's a house. It's it, it's a dwelling. Uh, and you're planning to have it be turned back into a dwelling? Yes. The, the intent of that lot, lot 22, was just simply to rebuild the house. So there's a total of eight. Uh, Proposed dwellings, is that right? That is that is correct. Okay, two on the CM property, as we see on the left. RM. RM, sorry, that's what I meant to say, sorry, thank you. Two on the RM property, and then six on the CM property? Correct. And as I said, there are four lots on the RM property, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And you're proposing to construct single family homes on only two of them, two of those lots, is that right? That, that is correct. And will septic be on those other two lots? Is that the intent? The, the intent is to do a, a small decentralized wastewater treatment plant to treat all eight homes. All eight, is that because there's no practical septic in the CM property? The, the CM property does not per perk well. Does not uh, the, the, the two uses that are there currently are on pump and haul. Gotcha. Okay. Pump, that makes sense. Hall application, you know, the health department, had, they, they operate, but they're, they have a pump and haul agreement. That makes sense. Okay. So could one home, could that pump and haul support one single family dwelling? There, there are many single family homes on pump and halls, but but it's not something that the health department would approve as a new use. Gotcha, okay. So then let's look at the property on the right, the CM property. And for how long has it been zoned commercial marine? As long, I would say at least since 2000, in, okay. during the 2002 zoning ordinance. Right, because it's been at least since the 2010 one, because it's in ours currently. Well, it, it was it was on CM before then. Right, yeah. And it's uh, so far, so long before you began working on this project, because you said you started working 10 years ago? At, at least that long. Has it ever been changed from CM to any other zoning district? Not, not in my recollection. Did you lobby to change it from CM to RM or another zoning district? I, I I would not have done that on my own, and the owner never asked me to do that. Gotcha. So effectively, because it's zoned CM, you have to comply with the zoning requirements. Is that right? That is correct. So let's talk about the purpose of the CM district from the 2019 ordinance. I have that up on the screen. Um, oops. Can you see that for me? Yes. You and your attorney went over this, and um, we can just read it quickly since he did it. The Commercial Marine Zoning District allows marine sales and services, including marinas, dry storage for vessels and boats, boat yards and vessel yards, vessel and boat and equipment sales and rentals, marine-related sales, yacht clubs, visitor accommodations, food and beverage sales, and eating and drinking establishments. And then the uses allowed are those identified in Schedule 50.4. That is correct. Are single family homes or anything related to residential or residences listed as a purpose of the CM? Uh, other, other than it's listed in Schedule 50.4. Right. So that's a, that's a use, right? Not part of its purpose. What? Um, people live on boats. You know, I, I mean that I don't I don't really get that. Okay. I, mean, I think you look at the purposes. It doesn't it doesn't. Yacht clubs have residences on them. Sure. I, I mean, you know, there's. I see what you mean? I see. I take your point. I, I don't think that that's exclusive of that. Sure. So this is a, a GIS view of the property. Is that right? That that is correct. 
and what's the current what the, CM, the cm zone part of it absolutely thank you uh, thank you for the clarification what is the current use of the cm property as a whole here there is a there is a building that's been used as a nightclub it's been used as a restaurant and there's a house on the property what's its current use you know the owner is here i think he would be most appropriate to answer that question okay is it being used as a marina do you know i, I from the photograph i see one boat in a slip and i see i see boats on the property um, and I see a marina. I see I see many slips in, on the property. Is the marina going to remain under your proposal? Um, yes, the, the intent is to leave the marina there. Okay. Which lots are part of the marina, the marina use, I should say? Um, I would say the marina is part of all the uses, all the lots. All the lots. And there was once a bar on the property, is that's right? Yes. Is that, that's, not long, that's no longer there, that's correct? The, the business doesn't operate there to my, the best of my knowledge. That's what I thought too, yeah. So you said all the lots are related to the marina, is that right? Yeah, I think from a marketing perspective, the owner intends to, to make a slip available to every lot. Sure, that makes sense. Or multiple slips. Okay. So are lots 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 20 still, 22 still going to be used for the marina? The marina will be associated with them, yes, but, but they'll be operated as, a, as lots. That, you know, the, the proposal is to put a single family residence on each lot. Will the acreage of lots of the single family homes be reduced from the acreage of the marina? I'm not sure I understand that question. So the marina is currently 1.16 acres of the property is, is that correct? So, something like that. Sure. The square or the footprint of each of the houses is 800 square feet. I, I think that is correct. Will that square footage be reduced from the acreage of the marina? I, I mean, I guess it depends on what you call a marina. I mean, I think the marina is where boats, where boats moor. And you know, you know the, the number of slips is not anticipated to reduce. No, but you said that all of the lots are part of the marina. So when you put houses on them, doesn't that reduce the marina use? Well, from that perspective, I guess it would, but but it might increase the marina use, you know. Maybe not the marina use, but the marina acreage. If you're putting a house on something, doesn't that decrease the use for the marina? I, I, I mean, I'm saying hypothetically, if I understand your question, yes, I would say yes. Okay. And more less than my hypothetical. Say I put a house there. Can somebody who visits the marina go inside my house as part of the marina? Well, I would think not. Yeah, right. So it's decreasing part of the acreage from the marina. Is that right? I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. So, in let's look to the 1927 plat. This is. Um, I took this from your uh, your attorney's presentation, but do you know? Can you do you know what the dimensions are of the of lots nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen and twenty two are? If if we look at the fine print on the plat, we we could discern that. Okay, sure. So, are the dimensions of these lots going to be changed in your application? No. Okay. As the letter from the letter from Phil Shar stated back in fourteen. As long as the boundaries do not change, it, it would be permitted to go forward. Gotcha. So that is why we're leaving it in its present configuration. Okay, that makes sense. Oops, let's see. Okay, that makes sense. So what is the minimum acreage needed for a CM site? You know, I don't, I don't, well, I think it's one acre. I think it's one acre. Okay, and one acre is 
43,560 square feet, is that right? Yes. Okay. And this property is 1.16 acres. Correct. So I did the math earlier. That's 50,529.60 square feet. So basically 50,530 square feet. Sure. Okay. And there are five houses, as you said. Oh, six, I think. Oh, sorry, six houses. That's right. Good. Yeah, good point. Six houses on the CM property. And six times, oh, and each house has a footprint of 800 square feet, as we said. Okay. And six times eight, 800 is uh, 4,800, is that right? I, I think that's correct. So if we subtract, I can do this on, if you guys want, let's see if I can do this. I mean, what I would like to interject here is, is these lots were created long before the zoning regulations. You know, there's right. lots of record oh. with them carries a development right. And I don't think there's anything in this ordinance that denies that development right. Okay. And the development right is specified to be one per site, one single family residence per site. Yes. Right. So, okay. So if we take 4,800, from 50,530 square feet, we get 45,730. Does that seem fair? Uh, yes, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And that's just subtracting the footprint. And do these people get front yards? The, the single family Mr. Chairman, I, I, Mr. Chairman, if I may jump in, it, it seems that this line of questioning is pretty far away from the reason the director gave for denying this okay. um, I, I hate to object in these i know the rules of evidence don't apply but but it, I, I don't think that was at all the basis the acreage or anything of mr hunt's decision as shown in the written denial sure i can skip ahead that's fine so let's look at your well but let me let me try to answer that question to some extent because that is exactly the kind of guidance i was looking for uh -huh. in these particular cm lots all of the lots are going to be in the critical area of expanded buffer. Maybe right. not even the expanded buffer, maybe the 100-foot buffer. Mm -hmm. And and so you don't even start talking about a front yard until you get past the buffer. So, you know, they don't really have a front yard. So we've got to kind of figure out a way to deal with that. It's kind of an unusual situation, and that's the kind of guidance I was seeking. Sure. Oh, my point was only that if you have six houses with 800 square feet and they have a front yard, that decreases the acreage of the marina below one acre. That was all my point was. But we can move. We well, can move. well, fair. But but also, you know, this this marina, if you will, the, the building on the property extends out over the waters of the state. It has existed so long that the state is not trying to take that away. But, but it is an offer of the applicant to remove it to kind of make the critical area program work a little better to establish some buffer. Okay. So we're trying to comply com we're trying to comply with many overlapping rules. And it's oh, I agree. I agree. No, I agree. A, yeah. a, a project that makes sense. All right, all right. I completely understand. So let's take a look at your application again. You list I've highlighted you list the project name as Sissel Subdivision Number Four of Patuxent Beach. Is, did you choose that name because that's the name of the subdivision for this part of the Leverings? That's what's that's what's on the plat. That right, exactly. the subdivision plat. Exactly, exactly. You know it's, why it's right called here. Leverings? You know I don't know why it's called Leverings. But I don't know why it's called Leverings. I, I don't know if anybody knows. But that's what's on this right here. I, right? I think if you look hard enough in the land records, you will find a plat that says Leverings. It's the oh, same sure. land, it's shown the same, but it's called something different. I agree. But right here that I have uh, is where you get that I get that from. Is that right? the, name, the, the name comes right off of the subdivision. Exactly. So is this redevelopment to be part of that subdivision? Is that the intent? I think the redevelopment is, is has to do with some of the lots within that subdivision. Okay. And you list two property addresses. 23 880 
and 23,900 and then the lot numbers? Yes, because because that is the way the tax records, the tax map shows the property. That's the way the the, the land use and growth management has has assigned addresses to the property. Gotcha. Let's look at your letter, the letter that you wrote, the cover letter, I guess is what we're calling it. So you wrote, please find attached a copy of a sketch plan showing the proposed redevelopment of the property. Do you okay. see that highlighted? Yes. Are you treating the property all as one big property? Is that what is that what that means? I, I, I clearly have shown all the property on one piece of paper in one exhibit. Okay. I mean, and I clearly have done that. Right. And then you say a review of the files for this property will reveal several ideas that have been sought for the use of the property. Do you yes. see that? Yes. And then the next uh, large paragraph, or the third paragraph, I guess, says, or second, says the property is divided into two zoning districts and the critical area overlay. Part of the land is in the CM zoning district with an LDA overlay, and part is in the RM zoning district with the same CA overlay district. Yes. Okay. And again, we talked about how last year wasn't the first time that you explored redevelopment of the site. You did that in, again in 2014. Yes. With, and former director Phil Shire wrote you concerning the project. That, that is correct. And in that case, I have the letter before us. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. And in the ray line, it says Town Creek Marina Redevelopment, tax map 35, block 2, parcel 4, lots 8 through 17 and 22. Yes. That's the property at issue that we're talking about this whole time. Yes. And several of my, and then the next highlighted part says, several of my staff and I met with Ren Steary, director of the Maryland Area Critical Area Commission, and two environmental planners to discuss redevelopment of the Town Creek Arena site, in parentheses, the site. So the prior director also viewed the redevelopment project as a site, is that correct? Site is a term, you know, you're talking about a grouping of lots. If you want to call it a site. I mean, the CZO calls it a site, or uses the word site, but that's fine. So then it next says several issues were examined with the understanding that the redevelopment would include seven dwellings, now it's eight, and a consolidated operation in a shared sewage system located on two of the RL zoned lots. RL is now RM, is that right? That is correct. And these issues, and our guidance on how to proceed to the site plan submission are elaborated below. These issues, do you see that? I do. Okay. And then the next highlighted part says regulatory and site constraints. You see that? I do. And then your attorney went over this, but we'll go over it again. CM District, which is Commercial Marine, footnote 14, now footnote 4, of Schedule 32 of the CZO, stipulates that, quote, one single family dwelling is permitted per site, end quote. Schedule 50.4.15 notes that only a detached dwelling is permitted, only a detached dwelling is permitted in the CM district. Do you see that? I, I do see that. So the first line references uh, the conversation with Ren Siri. You, you spoke about this with your attorney in this just a second ago, but do you, were you at that meeting? No, I was not. Did you ever communicate with Phil Shire regarding his use of the term, the site? Not that I can recall. And then if I can, I wonder if I can highlight this, maybe. So do you see hmm, in the second line from the bottom of this paragraph, the first two words say consolidated operation? Yes. Do you know what Mr. Shire meant when he referred to a consolidated operation? You know, I, I would say he, he would talking about the, the project as we were envisioning it. And I would also say that he also is talking about seven dwelling units. What is the, what is the project as you envisioned it? I mean, I've put it on a piece of paper. It's, it's shown on a sketch. It, okay. it, shows, it shows a public sewer treatment plant and eight houses on on eight separate and distinct lots. Okay. 
Let's talk about how the CZO defines the word site. Uh, I took this from chapter 90 of the CZO and I just underlined parts of it. Okay. So site, any tract, lot, or parcel of land or combination of tracts, lots, or parcels of land which are in one ownership or are contiguous in inverse ownership where development is to be performed as part of a unit subdivision or project as shown on an application. You submitted an application, is that correct? No, we submitted other. I, I submitted I submitted a sketch plan for discussion. Yes, if you want to call that an application, yes. I mean, you No, no doubt. No doubt. There it is. That says the application, right? And that's just your signature. Okay. Yes. You submitted an application and it involved a combination of lots, is that right? It is. Lot 9 through 13 and 22 in the CM. Yes. 17 in the RM. Can, can may, and, I ask a, may I ask a clarifying statement? You know. Um, you know. Uh, no, Mr. no, no. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a oh, question? Sir? Mr. Chairman, sure. Yes. Who, who wants yeah. to ask the question? It, it's up to you. It's your call. Yeah, um, who, who wants to ask the question? Mr. Mahaffey? The, the witness. Yes. yes. Okay, go ahead. It, it would have been a reasonable response from land use to say, submit each of these lots on a separate application. I would, I would have willingly done that. I would have expected that to happen, but I was told to do exactly what I did. And I did what I was told to do, requested to do. Did that deny you? So if what we're talking about is I should have made eight separate applications, you know, then I was misdirected. Well, was the director's if decision in any way about. stopping you from doing that? Well, we were told we had to appeal this decision. So, yes, we're stymied because we have to seek remedy through the appeal process before we can seek other other relief. Well, it looks like you had submitted a plan and that plan was rejected. It seems like maybe you could have gone back and perhaps revise the plan and resubmit it. That wasn't that wasn't offered as a solution. He's right. I don't know if it's there. If it's, and it's, Mr. Chairman, if I may, we'll, management's we'll, we'll certainly requirement to give that to give that sort of solution to a client. Well, Mr. Chairman, if we may, I'm happy to ask those questions to Mr. Knight and Mr. Hunt. My understanding was that even if they did that, their interpretation would be that only one house can be on the entire CM zone property we're looking at. If their opinion has changed in that, we gladly welcome it. Well, when we, uh, where if we just need to okay. support. We will hear, we will hear but that, that testimony in a, in a while. Okay. So um, going back to the definition of site, it says, which are in one ownership, and the Burkharts own all of it. Is that correct? I mean, it's owned by a person. Greg Burkhart is the owner. He, he, he is the, probably the managing member of one of the LLCs. But it doesn't matter if they're in diverse ownership. They can still be called a site if that's the way the application is stated. But, but I, was, I was seeking guidance for an application of this land. It was pretty clear what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. and we can read the letter again as to what the decision is. Sure. I wanted to know how to proceed, and here we are. Right. And then the next line says, where development is to be performed as part of a unit, subdivision, or project, as shown on an application. And on your application, you wrote that the project name is Sisal Subdivision Number 4 of Patuxent Beach. Yes, because that's the way the land is described. Well, we, were not, we were not we were not seeking a re-subdivision of any of the lots. Right, so you were seeking it to be part, in part of Sissel Subdivision Number 4. It is part. It was, I was, it was just a reference of what the land is known as. Right, and the entire project was on one single uh, sketch known as the Town Creek Marina Development Sketch that you designed. That is correct. And, and it might it might be worthy to note if you look into the zoning ordinance a bit further that a that a right of way private or public separates parcels so there are two distinct parcels that you cannot possibly say are one site. 
Right. I mean, they're separate. They're separated by a road. Right. No, I'm talking just about the CM site for now. Okay. If you want to talk just about the CM site. And all this was shown on your application that you submitted for review. Is that right? That is correct. Nothing further. Does the board have any questions? Mr. Chairman, I think I have a right to, to redirect if the chair allows it. Just a couple of brief questions. I'm sorry, and you're quite, you want to redirect? Yeah, just a few brief questions to okay, clarify keep, keep a, a, brief, a couple please. of the questions. Certainly. Um, Mr. Mahaffey, I'm going to just share um, my PowerPoint before and the letter from from Mr. Shire before. And I'm, I'm concerned that Mr. Murphy only showed you a, a brief portion of the letter that he had highlighted. And you remember him doing that during your testimony? Yes. And he referred to it being one site and he referenced that there is a definition of site in the zoning ordinance? Y yes. But Mr. Shire's letter clearly showed that you were anticipating building a house on each lot. And that, wasn't that your understanding of the letter? As I pointed out in that first paragraph, he mentions seven, <clears throat> seven lots. Right, and, and I'll show you in, in a paragraph that Mr. Murphy didn't show you or the board during your questioning. Uh, where I've drawn some of the, the highlights on this section where it says staff recommends that you build detached dwellings. Do you see that? Yes. So I, I, I'm not an expert in the English language, but dwellings means more than one, correct? <laughs> it, does, it means that to me. Okay. And it says relatively small footprints, right? That, that is correct. You wouldn't need more than one footprint if you're only allowed to do one house on this site. Is that correct? That's the way I understand the plural of a word. And then it says, although parking areas are not required to be located under the dwellings again. Do you see that? Yeah, the yes. Plural? Yes. Okay. And it talks about each property. Do you see that in order yes. to meet the minimum setbacks? Yeah, yes, and, each property. And then it goes on to say that locating the parking areas under the dwellings, again, a plural, correct? Correct. So uh, I understand Mr. Murphy wants to make the argument that this is all one site, but when you read this letter as a whole, it's pretty clear that Mr. Shire was looking at it that there'd be more than one dwelling put on the sites that we're talking about here tonight. Is that fair to say? I mean, a absolutely fair to say. And, and it was my intent to investigate how to proceed with adjacent lots that were that were had eight lots six lots created in the cm district that were distinct and separate lots and how would be the best way to proceed through the development process for those lots right and not and what? Not, not to detach from that but but they kind of go as a group because we need a public sewer system because they're on individual lots you can't serve and, you can't serve sure. lots with a private sewer system. Sure, and, and you know just to call call a spade a spade. But what we're here talking tonight about appears to be that there's a a different interpretation of the ordinance now than the one that was applied in this letter from Mr. Shire. Is that a fair statement? Most most definitely different now. Okay. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have for redirect to Mr. Mahaffey, but I do reserve the right to call him in our rebuttal argument if necessary. Okay. John, any questions at this time or you wanna hold them? Well, I will hold them. <laughs> I have a question. Okay, one question, Mr. Richardson. Uh, Mr. Lawnmower, this is Rich Richardson. Uh, on the letter dated sure. 10 July, 2020, would you consider that a request for guidance or request for approval? I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm happy to answer the question. I think Mr. Mahaffey certainly can as well as a sworn witness. I, I, I mean, my understanding is that he was looking for, you know, information and guidance and not a formal approval through that letter. Uh, Billy, is that correct? I mean, that, I, that's exactly the, what I meant with the, the final two sentences. You know, I, I offered up, I needed guidance to move forward and I offered, you know, if there are any questions or comments or you need anything else, let me know. 
So again, Mr. Lawnmower, so hearing, hearing the answer is a request for guidance, yet Mr. Hunt disapproved it. That, to me, that doesn't match. We're asking for guidance and we just get a disapproval. Well, what? <laughs> and I certainly agree that, and, and again, to clarify, the reason why we're here tonight and why we felt we had to do this and, and we you know, by no means are here to, to frivolously waste your time. When the decision was labeled as a final decision and it appeared to have a legal determination that all six of these lots could only have one dwelling on it, we felt the need to protect my client's rights and we had to come to you to, to clarify that interpretation of whether that's accurate under the ordinance or not. And that's really what we're asking for tonight. Um, it, it appears that they made that determination. So any other applications we brought could be denied and, and they could tell us you lost your right because you didn't appeal it last time. So that that's really why we're here tonight. Okay, then I guess we move on to Mr. Murphy. If you want to let me know who's going to be testifying for you. Any, excuse me, Mr. Chair, any other witnesses for Mr. Longmore? Not, not at this time. I, I will say that Mr. Murphy and I spoke before. I, I do have questions for either Mr. Hunt and or Mr. Knight, but we've decided I'll ask them as part of cross-examination, so not to double up witnesses. So I'll be happy to defer to Mr. Murphy to begin with those. Thank you. Mute button. Mr. Murphy, could you say that again and, and get off of mute? <laughs> Muted, sorry, thank you. Uh, the witnesses uh, will be, so first I said, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Chris. <laughs> but after that, I said, uh, the witnesses will be Harry Knight and then Bill Hunt in that order. As Bill Hunt, I have sworn in Harry Knight for the evening. Is Mr. Hunt there? He should yeah, be. So I, tried to take, I tried to take the oath before, but you didn't say my name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you are about to give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. You may proceed. So I'm gonna just begin with a brief opening and then, uh, which has some slides, but all of the slides had the testimony that was provided by Mr. Mahaffey. Um, and then I'm gonna ask, uh, Mr. Knight and then Mr. Uh, on questions, if, that, if that's okay. If I, if, if I could just remind you, we will be closing the meeting at 10 o'clock or thereabouts, and we okay. have a couple of items sure. I think to go over, take about 10 minutes. Certainly. Uh, you've got a little more than a half hour. And that, or else, right. thank maybe, you, sir. Or else there'll be a continuance. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully this works. Can everybody see this? Very well. Does it say, is it the PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So good evening. We ask that you uphold the decision of Director Bill Hunt and disapprove of the Town Creek Marina development sketch for two reasons. First, one of the proposed buildings in the residential medium density did not meet the 10 foot side yard setback standards. And second, the base density standards mandate that only one single family dwelling per site in the commercial marine zoning district. In other words, one marina, one house. Here, the applicants proposed six single family dwellings at one commercial marina in the CM zoning district. That's five more dwellings than, a, than are permitted at one marina. As a result, the Town Creek Marina development project is in violation of the base density standards of the CZO and the Lexington Park Development Plan. As for the RM Zoning District, the 2019 uh, Lexington Park Development Plan, Ordinance 2019-32, requires a 10-foot side yard setback for all, all principal structures in the RM Zoning District. On the screen is the entire sketch plan, and then, as I showed in Mr. Mahaffey's testimony, I zoomed in to the area at issue. As you can clearly see on the screen, one of the proposed buildings clearly encroaches beyond those 10 feet. Mr. Mahaffey said it was around nine inches. 
And Mr. Longmore was correct. Normally, a sketch plan would not be denied merely for this, because this issue correctly could be resolved either with comments to change the size of the proposed building or with a variance request. However, you'll hear testimony that Mr. Mahaffey asked Lugum to render a final decision on the sketch plan, which contradicts Mr. Mahaffey's testimony, that basically Mr. Mahaffey wanted a yes or no decision without comments. As a result, Mr. As a result, because he wanted a yes or no decision and because the side yard step back standards were not met, Lugum disapproved of the sketch plan. As for the commercial marine zoning district, the uh, schedule 32.1 of the CZO and the Lexington Park Development District uh, describe the base density for each zoning district. For commercial marine, the base density is none, though in the CZO it says, after none, it says 14, now it says four, which refers to footnote 14 in the CZO and footnote four in the Lexington Park plan. Footnote 14 is the same as footnote four and is reproduced in the same screen, which says only one single family dwelling is permitted per site. Again, as described in the, my conversation with Mr. Mahaffey, the minimum lot size in the CM district is one acre. The CZO defines site as the following, which I went over with Mr. Mahaffey. Any tract of land, any, sorry, any tract, lot or parcel of or combination of lots or parcels of land which are in one ownership are contiguous and in diverse ownership where development is to be performed as part of a unit subdivision or project as shown on an application here the application proposed development on lots 9 through 13 and lot 9 and lot 22 thus a combination of lots and all of this was actually confirmed with my conversation with mr mahaffey that he admitted that it more or less was site according to the application that he should have submitted or could have submitted something differently had he known better. <laughs> the application included both addresses, both zoning districts for one large project. The project name for the entire redevelopment lists the original subdivision name for the lots, Sissel Subdivision Number 4, Patuxent Beach, and Mr. Mahaffey stated that all this was to be part of one subdivision, the old subdivision, because that's how it's been platted. There was no intent to resubdivide uh, because it remains part of CISL subdivision number four. Thus, by Mr. Mahaffey's own words, the development is, quote, to be performed as part of a subdivision as shown on application, thus meeting the definition of site. Furthermore, the application used a single sketch for the entire project, labeling it the Town Creek Marina Development Sketch. The sketch, as will show, be shown by testimony from uh, Mr. Knight or Mr. Hunt, ignored the lot lines and set by requirements in the CM district. All proposed homes on both properties will share a single point of, single point of sewage disposal in the RM property. And based on the application this they submitted, these lots form a single site. While only one single family home is permitted per site in the CM district, their application proposed six which violates the base density requirement of one per site. While there may be six lots of record in the CM property, and while each has its own development right, they cannot ignore the zoning district in which these lots sit. They are uniquely positioned differently from the other lots that are single family dwellings in the levering. Those ones are not in the CM property, and that's what matters here. The CM district only allows one single family dwelling per site. Director Hunt reviewed the application as they submitted it, and from the applicant's own language, what there is and what there was is one single project, part of one subdivision, and therefore one single site. Simply put, the zoning district allows them to build one single family home. They proposed six. That was wrong, so it was denied. As correct, Director Hunt correctly determined that the development sketch failed to satisfy the setback and base density standards, we ask that the uphold this decision. At this time, I'd like to call Harry Knight. Present. Hi, Harry. <clears throat> you hear me all right? I can, can you hear me? Yes. Can you introduce yourself to the board? Harry Knight, Deputy Director of the Department of Land Use Growth Management. How long have you been deputy director and what did you do before that? 
I've been deputy director one year, acting deputy director a period of time before that, permits coordinator since, a, well, permits manager for a brief period of time when it was reclassified up from its coordinator since approximately 1998. Um, between 1994 and 1998, I was the code coordinator here you've been, in the Department of Land Use Growth Management. You've been, My prior job history is not, sure. it isn't. For sure. Um, and you've been with Luggin for about 26 years, is that right? Over 26 years. And what are some of your responsibilities as deputy director? The um, review and approval of permits, which are the, um, oh, with deputy director is overseeing the permits division, the comprehensive planning division, the board of appeals, that is it. And do you also administer the, the comprehensive zoning ordinance? Well, certainly in all of those, um, it, administration of the comprehensive zoning ordinance as it applies to those different divisions of the department. Gotcha. Are you familiar, and are you familiar with this case? Very. How are you familiar? Well, my familiarity goes back to, um, I'll, I'll estimate June, when some emails from Mr. Mahaffey were um, being received by Brandy Galan of this department asking about this um, development proposal. I was probably not privy to the first emails but Brandy Glenn um, did her review based on the information received in emails and said you can only have one house on a commercial marine site. Um, he wanted to pursue his proposal further, so I got drawn into the email chains. Um, so I would agree with Mr. Mahaffey that he absolutely was trying to find a process forward because he had been told in numerous emails from Brandy and myself, and we conferred with the director, Bill Hunt, um, what is the appropriate answer based on requesting to put multiple single family dwellings on this commercial marine site. And the consensus was it's not approvable because you can only have one single family dwelling on the commercial marine site. I could dissect Mr. Shire's letter and show you how I interpret it differently, but I don't think we need to go back in time. The key is the definition of site as used in this development proposal. So when Mr. Maher Mr. Mahaffey wanted guidance on how to move forward, I said, Mr. Mahaffey, sending us a slightly different email on the same subject is not going to change it. My advice to you is if you want to move forward, you apply for it. So he did. You'll get a formal decision. And as much as he said in his testimony that he was surprised at the, at the abruptness of the response, my whole um, intention of having him apply was so that he would get a final director's decision that could be appealed so that he could move forward. Gotcha. And that's eventually what they did, correct? They appealed. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're here tonight, perfect. So let's look at the sketch plan as it was submitted. Um, we have one property on the left, that's zoned residential medium, one property on the right, that's zoned commercial marine. Is that your understanding? Absolutely. I, I will add, Mr. Mahaffey claimed in his testimony that he was looking for critical area guidance. That was never, um, brought up to me and any suggestion that there's buffer issues is a non-issue because Mr. Shire's letter pointed it out and our current zoning maps agree the property is zoned BMO, so you should be able to develop it without needing any critical area variances. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Harry. So let's first talk about the property on the left, the residential medium. How long has it been zoned RM? since September of 2019. Prior to that, it was zoned RL. And that's the RL that was referred to in Mr. Shire's letter? Correct. So the multiple dwellings referred to in Mr. Shire's letter is in um, is taking into account that um, at least four dwellings could have been built on the RL property and one on the CM, which is why it refers to multiple dwellings. But the part Mr. Longmore left off was in accordance with the comprehensive zoning ordinance. Right. And so 
Yeah, prior to the letter, Phil Shire points out that per the comprehensive zoning ordinance, CM site, one single family dwelling. Mr. Mahaffey also brought up that he was told to switch duplexes to single family dwellings detached, of course, because duplexes are not allowed in the CM zone, but one single family dwelling is per site. So it's fair to character, it's unfair to characterize Mr. Shire's letter to say that when he says dwellings, he's just talking about this CM site. Is that correct? I agree. Gotcha. And there's four lots of record on the RM site, correct? That is correct. And what's on the property right now? What's built on the property? How is it developed? On the RM site, I believe there's two mobile homes there. And the project proposed is two new single family homes detached, correct? Yes, um, it was not clear. Um, Mr. Mahaffey's plan did not name what the proposed development. If you look in the lower right hand corner, mm -hmm. um, nowhere on the plan did it say what the buildings were going to be. They were um, labeled proposed building footprint. So um, I had to call Mr. Mahaffey for clarification and that's why I wrote my note in the lower um, right hand corner he clarified mixture equals single family dwellings detached plus marina per discussion via phone with Mr. Mahaffey, 1040 AM, July 24th, 2020. Gotcha. And so there's four lots, two houses, and the other two are gonna be what? I believe all the buildings um, shown on this sketch plan are intended to be single family dwellings. Oh, there are four lots on the RM property. On two of those lots will be single two, family home. Correct. And the other two lots will be. Oh, that? a septic system, a supporting right. both the RM property and the CM site. And all of that's completely permissible in the RM district normally, correct? Those two uh, uses. Septic systems supporting permitted uses in a zone are permissible. Notwithstanding the project, this part of the um, proposal was denied. Is that correct? The RM side? The only issue on the RM side was the zoning setback. Um, and I agree that it was very trivial and easily resolved. But my concern was that um, if we were going to move forward, I should not give him comments asking for revisions. I should give him a firm denial so he could move forward with the appeal tonight. And on the screen is that firm denial, uh, which was turned into an email, which was on Mr. Uh, Longmore's slide. Is that correct? That's correct. This is a computer printout of that same email? Uh, yeah, it was put in the computer first and then copied and pasted into an email. Gotcha. But the content is the exact same. Exactly. And that denial for this says it doesn't conform to the 10 foot setback. And as Mr. Mahaffey said, that was nine inches. Does that sound right? Yeah, I'll buy that. And for uh, further view, we've done this before, but this is the issue, is that right? Uh, that is an issue that Mr. Longmore brought up. Frankly, I don't think that issue was worth appealing. What was, What's worth appealing is the use of the word site. Gotcha. And as you said, this could have been fixed with a comment or variance, the, uh, the overreaching on the setback. As emphasized by my previous statement. Right, and it wasn't because Mr. Mahaffey asked you to render a final decision on a sketch plan? Uh, um, he did not, you know, in all my previous conversations with Mr. Mahaffey, Mahaffey, none of it had anything to do with zoning setbacks or critical area, it was all about how many houses can I put on the CM site? Gotcha. Perfect. So now let's take a look at the next slide, uh, which shows on the right, it's the commercial marine site. That is correct. And again, uh, I'm not going to reread it, but this is the purpose of the CM from the um, like the Park Development District uh, plan from 2019 mm -hmm. section. Um, it mentions a number of things, dry storage, boat yards, vessels, visitor accommodations, food and beverage sales, and then uses allowed or identified in 50.4. Are any of the purposes listed uh, single family dwellings? 
Uh, no, they are not. And while Schedule 50.4 allows it, um, it has a footnote because 50.4 does not supersede Schedule um, 32 development standard where the um, allowed density in the CM zone is none. And I know the history of that footnote. When the um, 2002 zoning ordinance was adopted, the uh, allowed density in the CM zone was none, zero. You couldn't have any. And staff pointed out, whoa, 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 what about existing marinas that have a house where the person who operates the marina lives? We should allow at least one house per commercial marine site not for the purpose of further residential development of commercial marine sites, but so that a person can live on the commercial marine site where they operate a marina. So basically it's for like a harbor master or something like that. Yeah, right. And there's several examples of that in the leverings. Can you can you provide some of those? Um, they are. Let's see. Oops. Is, okay, here I have the leverings up. These are all the commercial marine sites. That's correct. So, and so Mr. Burkhart's site is, is site A. Uh -huh. um, the Botel California is site B, which may or may not have a dwelling unit on it. It's not obvious to me. Uh -huh. um, the site C is the Dixon Marina, which is made up of multiple lots, um, lots 132, 133, and 134. All um, and all being used as a single site for a single house. Site D is the Altman Marina. Um, used to be known as Tilly. It uh, is half an acre, no lot numbers prescribed. I think that might have had a black. But um, anyway, one site, one house, and adjacent, but a different owner and a different marina operation is Mr. Gary Bradford. And his property is made up of lots 22, 23, 24, and 27, 28, and 29, all being used as a single commercial marine site with a single house on it. Though I think his house was converted to the commercial marine office building. And even the existing, uh, the, the site in question, there's one single family dwelling on the CM site currently, is that correct? At most. And on, that's the trailer that Mr. Mahaffey mentioned, is that oh, right? Oh, on, on yes, okay. we, right. There is that one trailer uh, that is yeah. correct. And how long has, uh, we, Mr. Mahaffey mentioned that the CM property has been zoned CM since at least 2002. I it agree. Re, and it was reaffirmed, I guess, in 2010 with the 2010 ordinance. And again in 2019. And during those 18, almost 19 years, no one proposed amending, to your knowledge, did anyone propose amending the zoning from CM to another district? On Mr. Burkhardt's property, not to my knowledge. And during the 2019 rezoning, was that the time for Mr. Burkhardt or somebody else to change the zoning from CM to RM or another zoning district? Absolutely. That was the perfect time for him to come forward and ask to have his commercial marine property, or at least a portion of it, zoned rm and by failing to do so you're basically stuck with the consequences right yeah you know i give the example my parents farm or my grandparents farm on breton bay you know would have been able to have 250 houses until 1985 when critical area turned it into only 10 houses at 20 acres per so, so this is not an unusual situation for a person to lose residential density allowances due to a rezoning. So there are some houses in an industrial district that currently exist right now, is that right? That is correct. And we do not allow um, single family dwellings detached in the industrial zone. So you could have a vacant lot in the industrial zone and that does not entitle you to build a house on it because it must comply with the zoning. Gotcha. And similarly here, they must comply with the zoning requirements of a CM site or of CM zoning, is that right? That's correct. And so for instance, I wanna point out, it says um, in this list, visitor, visitor accommodations. So we offered to Mr. Longmore to take back to his client that he could still get fair and reasonable use of his land and basically build those same 
types of structures, but rather than try to turn them condo and sell them, he could um, use them as short-term rentals. Bed and breakfast is allowed in the commercial marine zone, and you can have up to 10 cabins. The um, lodging um, motels is also allowed in the commercial marine zone as an accessory use. And I'm sorry, I conjecture that he could make more money weekly rentals. Um, you know, it's big business, Airbnbs and these. Right. And in fact, uh, Mr. Longworth's presentation had 20 permitted uses in the CM. Was that right? That's correct. So they could still have one single family dwelling and then use the other part of that property for those 19 uses. Correct. Okay. So let's look at uh, Schedule 32.1, uh, which is slightly different in the uh, Lexington Park Development District one, but the, the content is still the same. It says base density units per acre in the first square uh, for commercial marine. It says none, as you said, and you went through the history of that change. Is that right? It used to be none, but now it's one. And then footnote 14, now footnote one or four, one single family dwelling per site. Is that correct? Yes. And the idea was to have one house for somebody servicing the marina. Correct. As that was the that was the I guess legislative history of the the change. The most importantly, we did not want to render existing houses on commercial marine sites non-conforming uses. Sure, sure, that makes sense too. So, in it, the next part, it says minimum lot area must be one acre. Does that mean each marina site has to be at least one acre? I would say that that pertains to if you were subdividing new. Co new commercial marina lots. But this one complies because it's 1.16. That is true. And then we went over the definition of site a number of times, and that's at the center of this. Um, again, it's, I'm just gonna read the underlying parts. Any combination of lots which are in one ownership where development is to be performed as part of a unit, subdivision, or project as shown on the application. And you said that on the property right now is the commercial marina and one single family dwelling. Correct? Yes. And so again, on Mr. Mahaffey's application, uh, he described, uh, which I have on the screen right now, the project name is Cecil Subdivision Number 4, Patuxen Beach. And what does that name suggest to you? Um, Use of that name that uh, Mr. Sissel had some land and he divided it into multiple lots. <laughs> what is, uh, true, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> what is Mr. Mahaffey's use of that name, of that as a project name suggests to you? That he's um, took the name off the plat as a historical um, name for the property. Does it at all suggest that he intends the, uh, it to be part of a, the same subdivision? Well, well, that's true regardless of what you call it. I mean, he could have called it Burkhart's redevelopment, but it is still um, lots in single ownership um, in the commercial marine zone submitted on a single application. Gotcha. And let's look at that sketch again. So, uh, he suggested placing six proposed buildings or six single family dwellings on one commercial marine site. Is that allowed? That's what he proposed, but he can only have one per um, the current St. Mary's County zoning ordinance. Gotcha. So let's look at his cover letter. Let's just focus on the, the, the third highlight where it says the property is divided into two zoning districts and the critical area overlay. Part of the land is in the CM zoning district with the LDA overlay and part is in the RM zoning district with the same CA overlay district. Does this suggest to you that even the applicant views the properties as one single site? Oh, Jesus. I would feel very strongly that it was submitted to us as a single site and it was submitted by the applicant. Okay. And again, let's take a look at the sketch. So Mr. Longmore in his appeal says that there are 10 lots of record at these addresses, which I don't disagree with. And he says that each lot, quote, each lot has its own allowable density of at least one dwelling unit per lot. Do you remember reading that? I'm sorry, where did I read that? 
Oh, it's in uh, Mr. Longmore's appeal that each oh, lot, yeah. sure, has a, one dwelling unit per lot, basically. Correct. So why is he wrong, or is he wrong, and why? If so, why is he? Well, again, um, that's like saying if I have 250 acres in 1984 and the rural density in St. Mary's County is um, one house per acre, but then the regulation changes in 1985 and suddenly you have to have 20 acres per house. Um, and so this is a similar situation. The property was, you know, some people would say it was upzoned to commercial marine but because he wants residential, it was down zoned to one house per site. Gotcha. But regardless, it is zoned that way. And as Mr. Um, Bill Shire's letter said, <clears throat> staff recommends that the applicant build detached dwellings in accordance with the CZO. And the first page of the letter clearly said that the CZO says that um, a regulatory and site constraint is that you can only have one single family dwelling is permitted per site in the CM. So the, the multiple dwellings clearly in Mr. Shire's letter were referring to one house on the CM and multiple houses in the RL. And Mr. Longmore is shaking his head no, but that's, that's why we need the board to decide this. <laughs> right. <laughs> And so on this sketch, it's a single sketch for the entire project, that's correct? Yeah, so there was a single um, sketch plan submitted with the cover letter and the development review application. And in this sketch, were the lot lines honored? Uh, no, the, um, which to me is, is further evidence that the um, CM um, portion of the property um, clearly, um, he wants to ignore the lot lines based on the way the houses are laid out, um, not adhering to the zoning setbacks that the lot lines would prescribe. And so the side yard setbacks were not met because the lot lines weren't followed, correct? Correct. In fact, in some cases, the houses are slightly going over the lot lines. And Hence inferring the that they're not individual lots anymore, but it's a single site. And all the right, and all the six houses on the CM site uh, share a single point of sewage disposal. Correct? Yes, uh, it appears it's being developed um, as a single unit sharing a single septic system. Mm -hmm. And what mm, is our interpretation of the word "site" unique to Town Creek Marina? It is not. We've, um, you know, we've used this um, opportunity to use an amalgamation of your land so that, in fact, it's very common in subdivisions. You, how many parcels can you assemble to get your overall gross acreage to then divide by the allowable density in the zone, which this zone only allows one house per site, and then that's how you figure out how many lots you can have in that zone. Um, regardless of what Schedule 50.4 says you're allowed to do in the zone, you still have to go back to the development standards schedule to find out what your allowable density in that zone is. And even tonight, the board looked at uh, the uh, the 7-Eleven where there are multiple lots, but they weren't they were treated all as one site because of it, it was presented as one site. Is that correct? And yeah, and Mr. Longmore pointed that out himself. Right, and even the, uh, so for example, another one might be the Ford dealership or the Chevy dealership in Lexington Park, is that right? That's correct, they took um, four or five parcels, put them all together, you um, take the gross acreage, figure out what your overall floor area ratio and footprint is allowed to be. Um, we don't have to look at property lines for setbacks on internally. Mm -hmm. Is our definition of site denying uh, the applicant reasonable use of the land? Not at all. And in fact, I would read um, Phil Shire's letter differently about doctrine of merger. His whole point of lot consolidation will not be required, as in you will not have to record an instrument in the Office of Land Records consolidating them as one because your development proposal alone makes them one. All right. Nothing further. 
Thank you. I think this might be a good spot to hold a meeting for this evening and talk about the um, continuance at a time certain in the future. And does anybody have any objections to doing that on February 11th, which is a regular meeting date for the board? And if I remember- I'm sorry, Mr. what was the meeting date, Mr. Chair Chairman? Yes. What, what was the meeting date? I didn't hear you, Mr. February Chairman. 11th. There are two other cases that day, but we could do this one first, finish it up, and uh, go from there. Well, and then I guess we will begin- no, no I'm sorry. We will begin with Mr. Longmore um, in his cross-examination of Mr. Knight. What are, what are the other two cases? Mr. Testify. The other two cases are critical area um, well, that's, disturbance that's in the critical good area. Okay. Is, is Mr. Hunt going to testify? He will, yes. Okay, so then we'll continue with Mr. Hunt and then we'll let Mr. Longmore go through a cross-examination of both of them. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hunt is very short, by the way, maybe 10 minutes. Okay. In, not even in lawyer time, but in real time. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's my fault it ran over. Oh, no, 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 not at all. So is, <laughs> is uh, February 11th okay, yeah. Mr. Longmore? It works perfectly for me, but I'm always here, so. <laughs> That works fine with me, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so that's what we will do and we'll continue at that time. Do I need to make a motion for that or? And, sure. and Mr. Chairman, just just for for the record, I had mentioned it before, under the rules we're allowed to um, put on a rebuttal witness if we need to. I don't know if we will. Um, I think we have right to decide that after I cross-examine Mr. Knight and, and Mr. Hunt testifies. So Mr. Mahaffey or another witness may come in to, to rebut some of the testimony that's there. Just. I'm letting the board know for timing purposes. I know it's being rescheduled tonight with other things on the agenda. Correct. Sure. Okay, y'all. Uh, in the matter of ZAAP 20 1746 Town Creek Marina Appeal, I'd like to make a motion to continue the hearing to February 11th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The other thing I have also for tonight are minutes from the December Mr. 17th. Chairman, I, I hate to interrupt. This, this is Chris Longmore again. I, uh, in the past, it's been said it's important to put the, the time and the location of that meeting so it doesn't have to be re-advertised. Can we clarify on the record that it'll be at 6.30, held virtually by WebEx, and the board will be meeting in the meeting room where you're located tonight in the Chesapeake building? Make a second motion to amend the first. Well, that, yeah. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Second. Medinsky, second. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry to interrupt. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> we have the minutes from the December 7th, 2020 meeting. Did anybody see any? And there was one change. I don't know which, did, I don't know what minutes they have. I'm not sure either. Yeah, I, I made a change that. to it. Oh. Remember right here. I don't. I don't know what you have. Because on the board docs. So we're. What well, that? On the board docs. That's correct. This is. These are the minutes. Yeah. That's the one. That one. So this is okay? Yeah, that one's okay. And the change is the resolution, motion carried 4-0, recused yeah. Wayne Medinsky. Yeah. Thank you. And that was on the Chapman's that appeal. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the last Aye. item. Aye. That was John Brown. Okay, and the last item I have are the orders for the Hertz, Hertz or pro Hearts or Property, Second Election District, and it was ordered by Mr. Hayde, Mr. Brown, Ms. Delahaye, Mr. Medinsky, and Mr. Richardson. And Mr. Hayden will have to sign that. Um, I was gonna That's sign my it. question, Mr. Chair. I was gonna sign it for 
or just sign it. But, but you weren't even a member of the decision. That's why I asked the question. I think, um, Mr. Chair, as, uh, as chairman of this body and this body having properly considered and approved, I think that the uh, act of signing is more administrative. So I think you can sign it, yes. Okay. Okay, I'll make okay. a motion to sign in order. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 One more motion. Um, there was a can correction. Can I go to bed now? <laughs> there was a correction on the, uh, was that a roster? What was the minutes? No, the roster. Oh, the roster? Yes. I've got yes. your correction. And then I have your one phone too. Number. Yeah, my phone number's wrong. And Dan's term. And also, I think his phone number's. One had to be eliminated. Um, which one? The one that says home. Okay. Okay. The, uh, okay. He's homeless. All right. I'm good. Need one more motion. I make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you all. And the chairman did a great job tonight. <laughs> <laughs>